and party animals have split the first two. And now it all comes down to Saturday night at LSU. Banana Ball's college campus debut has not disappointed. This one obliterated a moonshot for Reese Lightning. Right in the infield and behind the back. Ryan Cox sends it to right center. And what a diving play by Danny Hosley. He's only struck out twice. Not gonna do that here. In fact, he's gonna send it out to right for a two-run home run. And with the two-seamer there, diving catch, D.R. Meadows. One more game of banana ball down on the bayou. The state of Louisiana comes down to tonight. Welcome in to game 16 of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by the Muffalotta Maniacs over at Zappos. We're looking live at Skip Burtman Field inside Alec Box Stadium here on the campus of Louisiana State University. Welcome inside the broadcast booth alongside Josh Talevsky, I am Biko Scala. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday night with us in virtual banana land. Josh, we have had two barn burners of ball games thus far here in LSU. Look, we've got a thrilling rubber match. After the party animals took game one in showdowns, the bananas were able to claim the victory last night in seven and a half innings because unfortunately some rain dampened the rest of the game. But nonetheless, we had 8,000 fans in the party plaza before this game rocking and rolling and we've heard them as the bananas came out in kilts let's remember bananas one and oh and or have never lost a game we should say in banana ball history when wearing kilts and it is going to be very fun we heard the crowd boo the party animals during their entrance and so far the bananas this season two and oh in rubber games as well let's see what happened last night in the nanners Four to two victory as they evened up this series here in Baton Rouge. We pick it up in the top of the first inning. Jake Skull, a gapper to right center. That's gonna drive in his partner in crime, Reese Hampton. And just like they did on Thursday night, the party animal is striking first. And the triple for Jake Skull also pays off. An aggressive base runner, able to get into third against a tough pitcher in Ethan Scooche, who had silenced those party animals bats and just a couple batters later it's Noah Fisher looping this one into right center and getting the party animals another run in the first inning. No donuts for the over 11,000 fans in Alec Box there. We'll see if they get them later in the night. Jason Swan able to grab the pop out in foul territory so the party animals claim the point. Ethan Scooge with the gritty to celebrate his first K and then another one right there of Taj Porter on the 360 with the bender. Jackson Olsen with the exclamation point on the inning. He walks it off as Flash comes flying home. It is 1-1 in points. Big hit for Jackson Olsen. You see all of the bananas celebrating, getting hype after that one from Olsen. And then as we reach the third inning, we saw Ethan Scooge yet again fanning some party animals. Reese Hampton going down swinging. Look at EJ and Ethan Scooge just, just fist bumping. So what you love to see, Skull goes down swinging as well and then with two runners in scoring position, Fisher 97 miles an hour off the bat, but Gabe Howell there to gobble it up to the bottom half. Delano able to hold serve thanks to this trick play from Reese Hampton to start it out. That's a beauty. Reese Hampton going behind the back for his sixth trick play of the tour, but the stellar defense for the party animals was not done there. Jason Swan stopping this ball on a slide and flipping it to Garrett Delano. Yeah, from his seat, what a play. The trick plays just getting revved up a notch. Ryan Cox showing you the shoulder work, a strikeout looking of Taj Porter. That would be number six on the night for Scoojay. And then a pop out from Swan Cox trying to get his third trick play of the night. 
That's going to cost the Nanners. Tanner Thomas busting it all the way from second base would score, and Delena would make it hold up. He gets his first K of the evening and celebrates with his patented crab. It wouldn't be a strikeout without the crab celebration. The Bananas send Kyle Lewis to the mound, and his night starts with a phenomenal diving play up the middle from Ryan Cox, throwing it on to first. And then with the runner on, Kyle able to induce this double play against Dalton Cornett. He got out of the inning in one minute and 41 seconds. Twelfth time in Lewig's banana ball career. He was under two minutes in an inning. That's the second most. Coxie going to walk off the fifth as Cornett not able to keep a foot on home plate. Alexiata scores safely. And then there's the donut batter strikeout. Kyle gives sweet confections to the full capacity crowd. Tanner Thomas goes down swinging as well. Lewig shaking those hips. And then A-Cup the other way, Reese Alexiotis. What a time for your second career banana ball trick play. And both of Reese Alexiotis' trick plays have had that cartwheel at the very end, becoming one of the more fun trick plays. And this was fun for DR Meadows. Lines this one into left field. Tanner Thomas, though, couldn't come up with the ball. And DR used his wheels to get all the way into third base there on the E7. And that would set up Gabe Howell, who works a full count and works the sprint. So the Nanners back out in front. They lead three to two after six innings of play. Tough break for Jake Lealios. Good news is it's an unearned run for him. Big boogie on the dish for the Nanners, as they've been known to do. Now to the top of the seventh, Kyle's still cruising, and here is Ryan Cox's third trick play of the evening. A terrific play by Ryan Cox to get Kyle out of the seventh. Still no hits allowed for Kyle. And speaking of a big hit, Dan Obers leading off the bottom of the seventh, sends this one into right center and winds up with his first triple of the tour. On third base, Swish with the celebration. That one's good from the land of good and plenty. And EJ Barrel right back up the middle. Bananas double their lead. They're up four to two after seven. And the Bananas unsurprisingly wanted to ride the hot hand yet again, sending Kyle Lewis out for a fourth inning of work in relief. Sets down Reese Hampton. DR Meadows running in and he lays out and makes a phenomenal diving play to Rob Reese Hampton of a base hit. And then Kyle getting Jake Skull here. Great play by Eric Jones Jr. at first base. No hits for Kyle Lewis throughout four innings of relief on the night. Bill Leroy calling Baton Rouge with the rain pouring line drive base knock. His second hit of the night. That would be the last play of the ball game. The rain just came down harder and harder. The lightning started blasting all over the place. And we had to call it in the bottom of the eighth inning. So the Bananas win a rain-shortened affair. 4-2, to two. and Bill Leroy, your showman of the night. Josh and I lucky enough to chat with the Nanners co-captain earlier today. Here's what he had to say about his performance. We've got showman of the night, Bill Leroy, two for two, couple barrels, gunned a guy down at second, and was calling Baton Rouge. Bill, I've got to ask you about the wild walk-up. That must have been nuts. Oh, we're there. Oh, it was a, it was a great walk up. You know, Colin Baton Rouge is super fun. They're screaming Louisiana out there. A couple barrels, gunned a guy out off the bench. It was a whole lot of fun, Biko. Bill, we've also seen a <laughs> couple of impressive bat flips on the season as well. And in your last day, be a bat flip to the moon. How high do you think you're going to get the bat flips this season? You know, I think the over-under was put at 100 feet. And I'm going to take the over because I'm launching that thing to the moon. I'm not going to stop all year long. Um, as about as high I'm about to lift Vico right now. So come on in here, Vico. I'm coming for you again, baby. Yeah, yes. <laughs> That's Bill Leroy. We're we're getting good at this thing. We'll we figure are. it out by the end of uh, Louisiana. Heads up, Kyle. <laughs> I'm coming for you. Josh, I only hopped off the ride because I thought you were going to take a jump in next. Look, I was not expecting two leaps over Bill Leroy. Yeah. I I mean, you still executed it very well. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to get to do a little dirty dancing with Bill Leroy. Let's see who will be throwing the first pitch of the ball game to him and who will be pitching in the bottom of the first as well. First up, Noah Nisnik drinking his patented and beloved Dr. Pepper. Mr. Undeniable Sean Fluke opposing him. Yeah, Sean Fluke leading the party animals in game started this season and got to start last weekend in Houston, Texas for the first party animal start ever in a major league ballpark. And so far on the tour, he's been really phenomenal and he's keeping the minutes per inning mark low, just continuing to set quick innings. He's thrown 10 career innings below two minutes, which is third all time in banana ball. Meanwhile, Noah Nisnik having arguably the most impressive start pitching wise that we've ever seen from a banana ball rookie and averaging more than a strikeout per inning pitch. Yeah, Noah Nisnik is living up to the nickname of Niz Nasty. Now, before we toss things things down to the field to get the Bananas lineup, 
we want to pop back in the booth because we have a shout out for Luke Vitter, who we know was supposed to be here tonight with uh, his teammates on his youth baseball team, ended up being injured on Friday. Luke, we're sorry that you weren't able to be here in person. That is an absolute bummer, but we have a little special present that we will be sending your way. So uh, get better, my dear friend, and thank you so much for spending the ball game with us here. Now, a little bit of a tease for what we have going on tonight. We will have Nasty Nisnik on the microphone. We will also have Sean Fluke on the mic as well, and Dustin Baber and Ryan Cox, number two and number one, in that order in the trick play race with mics on them as well. We may just slap a mic on the closer two. It's going to be a barn burner of a broadcast. It is surely going to be a fun one, and again, we're going to see a lot of competitiveness from both of these two teams in this rubber match. Yeah, a reminder, Louisiana is on the line tonight as we play banana ball in the Capital here in Baton Rouge. Okay, let's get it down to the field. Here comes the starting lineup for the Savannah Bananas. We are just moments away from first pitch. All right, Baton Rouge, let's meet the starting lineup for your Savannah Bananas. Leading off in center field, number five, DR, the Doc Meadows. Batting second at third base, number 11, Gabe Howell. Batting third at DH, number 19, Dan Opers. The extra hitter, number seven, Michael Vitamin D. In right field, number two, Reese Superman Alexiade. The left fielder, number 15, Rack. Robert Anthony Cruz. Behind the plate, number one, Bill Leroy. At first base, number 17, Brandon Showtime Crosby. At second base, number eight, he's our greatest showman, Jackson Olsen. And at shortstop number six, our glove magician, Ryan K -K -K -K. On the mound for your bananas tonight, number 88, Noah Miznik. Your Savannah Bananas are managed by Tyler Gillum, assisted by Adam Viro Virant. And Ray now that you have Ortega. seen the bananas starting lineup, let's get the 11 rules of banana ball. The name of the game is Banana Ball, and this is the fastest, most entertaining game in sports. Rule number one, win the inning, win the point. In Banana Ball, points are the most important. If you score the most runs in an inning, you get a point. The most points win the game. But in the last inning of Banana Ball, every run counts as a point. Rule number two, there is a two hour time limit. No new inning can start when the clock hits zero. Rule number three, no stepping out. If you step out of the batter's box, it is a strike. Rule number four, no bunting, because bunting sucks. If you bunt, you're thrown out of the game. Rule number five, batters can steal first. On any pass ball, wild pitch, or any pitch, a batter can take off and try to get first. Rule number six, no walks allowed. Walks are boring. So in banana ball, it becomes a ball for a sprint. And the batter will take off and advance to as many bases as he wants until every position player touches the ball. Rule number seven, no mound visits. Nope, stay in the dugout or stay in your position. Let's play ball. Rule number eight, if a fan catches a foul ball, it is an out. You got that right. In banana ball, everything's in play, so you better be ready. Rule number nine, the showdown tiebreaker. If the game is tied at the end of nine innings or when time expires, we don't just play extra innings in Banana Ball. It goes down to an ultimate duel, which we call the showdown. It is pitcher versus hitter with one fielder, and the hitter has to score. If both teams tie the first showdown, then it goes down to just pitcher versus hitter with no fielder. And finally, if we're still tied after two showdowns, the third showdown is pitcher versus hitter, one fielder, and base is loaded, and all the runs count as a point. Rule number 10, the banana ball challenge rule. 
Not only does each team have the opportunity to challenge a ruling on the field, but for the first time in sports history, you, the fans, have the opportunity to challenge a ruling on the field. Rule number 11, the golden batter rule. Now for the first time ever, a team can send up any batter to hit in any spot in the lineup. This is guaranteeing the best possible matchup, the best pitcher versus the best hitter at the end of the game when it matters most. These are the official rules of Banana Ball. It is game 16 of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by the pristine Postalaya pounding people over at Zappos. Let's get a look at the Bananas starting lineup in our first game in kilts here in 2024. Left to right in the outfield, you have Robert Anthony Cruz, D.R. Meadows, and Reese Alexiades. Third to first in the infield, shows you Gabe Howell, Ryan Cox, Jackson Olsen, and Brandon Crosby. Behind the dish is Bill LeRoy, and on the bump is Noah Nisnik. Well, of course, it is Ryan Cox leading this 2024 World Tour with 31 trick plays. Had three last night. He's going to go for the hat trick or better tonight as well. Just on another level this year, on pace for 166. Meanwhile, Reese Alexiades in right field, two of his last three games have had a trick play for Reese. I'm expecting him to possibly get his third tonight as well. Let's zoom in on Noah Nisnik with one trick play on the tour. He has been one of the best rookies we have ever seen in Banana Ball, if not the greatest across four appearances. Well, he's doing it out of the pen and also starting for the Bananas as well. And of course, draws the start here tonight. That three minutes and 38 second average MPI you see for Noah Nisnik, the best among all Bananas to start this tour, strike averaging over a strikeout per inning pitch, and his last start, four shutout innings for the Bananas. And the party animals line up opposing Nasty Niz. It is Reese Hampton at the top, just like he has been in all 16 games. Behind him, Jake Skull. And due up third, Brayson Bloomer. Cleaning it up tonight, Garrett Delano in the extra hitter spot. And Noah Fisher, Tanner Thomas, and Chase Acuff in the middle. In the bottom three, Taj Porter, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan. Yeah, Dalton Cornett not getting the start in this ball game, but the party animals wanting to switch it up against the lefty in Nisnik. The reason, you see two righties in Bloomer and Delano batting third and fourth in this order. Let's get it down to the young professor. We have a very special treat for you at this time. Here to throw the first pitch that counts as a count in the game. She is an Olympic gold medalist. She is a three-time coach of the year, and she is also the head coach of your LSU Tigers women's basketball team, Hall of Famer, Kim Mulkey. She didn't like the call. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, for Coach Kim Mulkey. Here comes Jesse Cole. Fans, it's time now. On three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Boy, tight zone from Vincent Chapman there. Kim Mulkey just barely missed the inside corner. She had some specific words to say to the home plate umpire about it and is ejected from this banana ball game. I cannot believe Vincent Chapman gave her a technical. Yeah, that's right. It was. You can do that in banana ball? Now you can. We'll have Kim Mulkey on the broadcast a little later. We'll chat about that. With a 1-0 advantage, Reese Hampton 
with a base knock. He's trying to turn it into two, and he's got it. Hustle double for Reese Lightning. He's in scoring position just like that. Not the start I'm sure Noah Nizik envisioned here tonight, but Reese Alexiotis trying to track that one down in right field, laid out and did a really good job getting the glove on that banana ball and keeping it in front of him. If that one gets behind Reese, that is three, possibly even four bases for Reese Hampton. It's his eighth extra base hit of the season. Pacing all hitters. As he breaks a tie with this man, Jake Skoll. Seven extra base hits, two home runs, a triple, four doubles. And our donut hitter tonight. If he strikes out at any point, the full capacity crowd here in Alec Box Stadium will be gifted free donuts courtesy of Duncan. Moved up into the two hole. And no donuts here. A trick play from Brandon Crosby. Through the legs a handful of times, a flip to Nisnik for the first out of the game. Well, he's leading all banana ball rookies in trick plays this season, and they call him Showtime for a reason. Every time he's got a ball hit his way at first base, it feels like he's going to try for the trick play. He does so early in this ball game. It was his eighth trick play in nine attempts. Now Bryson Bloomer, who was in the two hole last night, he traded spots with Jake Skoll. And after getting the half night off, he holds down third base. Noah Nisnik, very simple pitcher. Three pitches, four seam fastball, circle change up, and a curve. Boy, oh boy, has it been effective. And that's the equalizer right there. That's the circle change. Came in, came in at 77 when the fastball is close to 90, if not over. And it's very interesting. Last season, we saw Danny Hosley, a banana ball rookie, start the tour very hot on the mound. What do those two guys have in common? A terrific changeup, and that is a terrific play from Noah Nisnik off the mound, getting glove on ball and firing home to Bill Leroy to gun down Reese Hampton. Bill Leroy flourishes that play with the split. <laughs> that is a beautiful start to this banana ball game. Wow. So nice. You get to see it twice. Another look. Bill taking away the path to home plate for Reese Hampton once he had the ball. And Hampton a dead duck. We were now at first as Bill sets up behind Delano and shocking that that one came right behind his keister. Vincent Chapman says just a bit inside. Similar miss to Kim Mulkey on our first pitch that counted tonight. There goes Bloomer for second. Foul ball from Delano. Grayson's one for one in his stolen base attempts, but still not 100% with his running. He's such a skilled base runner, though. He can swipe bags off his jumps. Well, he's a veteran of the Tyler Dillon base running system, so he's not afraid to run when he knows that it's the right time. And Bloomer's continued to say that he's getting more comfortable with every AB he's getting. And of course, every time he is out there on the base pass, feeling a little more comfortable in his running abilities as well. That was an 89 mile an hour fastball on the black of the inside corner by Nisnik. That's where he lives. On the corners, and he'll come up with the K here. Uses the heat once again. Trackman headed at the same velo. Nisnik has his first strikeout of the night, 15th of the season, and just 12 and two third innings pitched. He continues to dazzle. This guy is ridiculously consistent. We touched on his average MPI before the game. Three minutes and 38 seconds. He just threw that inning in three minutes and 36 seconds. <laughs> Consistency is key for Niz Nasty. And Bill Leroy forgetting how many outs there were. No need to throw it down to Bryson Bloomer. Inning's over, buddy. Let's get a look at the party animals defense. Left to right in the outfield, you see Skoll, Hampton, and then Tanner Thomas. In the infield, third to first is Bloomer, Chase Acup, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan. The man munching behind the plate is Taj Porter, and the shirtless guy in the middle of it all, Sean Fluke. Last night, we saw Chase Acup and Dustin Baber tied with 21 trick plays apiece, but Baber back out to the team lead with 23. Jason Swan's got a trick play in this series, and we saw Reese Hampton impressed with a behind-the-back snag in center field against Ryan Cox. He's leading all outfielders, and he'll try for more tonight. Let's zoom in on Mr. Undeniable. Sean Fluke on the mound has become one of the most legendary party animals of all time. Sean Fluke has been 
terrific throughout his banana ball career. His three minute and 24 second average MPI, one of the top marks on this world tour. And look, he's going against a pitcher in Noah Nizek who strikes out a lot of batters. But Sean Fluke, he's the self-proclaimed strikeout king. He'll try and rack up a couple Ks tonight if this curveball is on. Okay, let's take a peek at the banana starting lineup. On the bottom right of your screen, you see we have got a zoom in on the world's slowest race, which is living up to its name right now. None of the toddlers moving at all, so the finish line's gonna be brought to them. Here is the banana starting lineup that now blocks our picture in picture. Tough work there, but that's okay. Two up this inning, only D.R. Meadows at the top. If he leaves the building, then the inning will be over. But behind him, Gabe Howell, Dan Oberst, Michael Deeb, Reese Alexiades, then Robert Anthony Cruz in left field, Bill Leroy catching the bottom three, Brandon Crosby, Jackson Olsen, and Ryan Cox. And the Bananas just continue to roll out Meadows, Howell, and Oberst at the top of this lineup. Each of these guys getting on base 40% of the time or better so far. Welcome into the broadcast party and we'll starting pitcher Sean Fluke. Ah, it's about time, baby. I've been tired of listening to y'all talk for so long. Bring me in, man. We are long-winded. Come on now. What do you got for DR? Oh, cutter. Oh, there we go. Ah, I'm just kidding. That's a pretty good looking pitch. <laughs> Trackman liked it. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, gritty all the way. I don't even know how to gritty, but it looks cool. Come oh, on, bro. What are we no. doing? Hey, let's go! Come on! That is not how you wanted your night to start. Come on, dude. Man, like, they got the top three guys. Like, like, we got guys in our team, but we don't do tricks like that just for. Like, Reese Hampton, they just catch it. These three guys right here, we just got to catch the ball. That just made your life a lot trickier. Yeah, unreal. We appreciate the attempt at showmanship, but now you're in a sticky spot with Gabe Howell. It's all right, I got him. Nice front door bender, just missed inside. Hey, uh, Lewis, you got any Swifties in the house here tonight? I like the way you're looking tonight, Flukey. Yeah, a lot better. Now, Blukey, you guys have been down in Louisiana for about a week now. What has been the best part of this trip down south? Oh, best part was probably that crawfish. It's pretty unreal. <laughs> I, I probably had maybe about 100 of them thing things. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Once I found out how to eat them, it was game over. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. Ooh, I don't know what happened. Foul ball, question mark. Gabe Howell is swinging the bat as if it, it did go off of it. 2-2. Yeah. 2-2 so, two, two count. I think VR is going to go here. I'm going to try to sneak it here. Man. Yep. Todd's on the same page. Oh, God. That's so it's just a hard out. I hope so. <laughs> good, good work by Reese Hampton that on that. That was freaking as middle, middle, as middle, middle gets, boys. I'll tell you that. 102 miles <laughs> off the bat, according to... You meant off, off the bat or from the pitcher's arm? What were you, what were you both, both, uh, Luke. I like it, good, good. Oh, God, I don't like this guy. Really my least favorite person to throw against. <laughs> he is scary, isn't yeah, he? He's freaking jacked. He freaking doesn't have to swing if he goes 100 miles an hour. It's like, come on. All right, DR, go, he's going. Yeah. He's got it, right? It's yeah. a good quick pitch here. You're doing yeah. a good job keeping him guessing. I got to help Taj out, you know? Oh, inside here, this could be the nightmare. Oh, well, at least I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't miss over the middle. Hey, 2 1, what's the pitch? Not a heater, yeah, it's not a heater. Oh. Hano burst is tough. Yeah, I mean, just flick that out there. Just flick it. All right, we got to do some damage here. Hey, let's go, ground ball here, let's go. How do you Favor, make me play. What's up? How do you get a ground ball on Michael Vitamin D? Man, I don't really know, man. I'm just trying to talk like some cool stuff. This way, maybe it happens. <laughs> maybe just build my confidence up a little bit here. I believe in you, Sean. Thanks. Change up, I like it. Yep. Well, we'll take that though. Oh, crowd's going crazy. Oh my God, folks. Yeah, I got a ball. Let's go too. Good. Here we go. Now I win the inning for us. Let's go. I got you, babes. 
Just keep getting him to hit the ball to Reese. Go ahead and tell me how this guy was the MVP last year. Come on. No, no. It, I want to hear it. This guy's mine. He was the 2023 Pioneer League MVP. 29 home runs and 29 stolen bases at, at, at for United Super Reese. Reese. <laughs> yep. You guys, oh, yeah, oh, you guys give Dan second base. As he swipes it. I'm going to bury this one. Yep. Wow. Swing a little harder, buddy. <laughs> oh, two. Yeah, high check. Cosmos. I was right down the middle. What am I doing? That did end up right down the right. <laughs> oh, middle, middle. <laughs> Jesus, man. When I tried to throw it really hard. I messed up a lot. That's kind of why I don't throw it really hard. <laughs> You got some juice tonight. Trackman had those both at 85. Ah, let's go, baby. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Throw it outside, Luke. Oh. Yes, sir, let's go. See you later, MVP. Yeah, it's my house, baby. Let's go. Sean Fluke, way to pick your defense up, let's buddy. Go. Yeah, let's go. That was the best pitch I've ever thrown out of this. Noted. Hey. Noted. Hey, Taj. That was dirty. <laughs> Fluke, do you mind if we keep you on the mic? Oh, here? yeah, let's go. I'm just going to get a little bit of water and a little parch. Okay, sounds great. Well, Fluke hey, gets boy. hydrated. Hey, we will welcome go. in Noah Mystic to the mic. Uh, how are we doing? MVP, who? Hey, I got you, Bob. Hey, yeah. Keep ripping them. You good? You got it? Ms. Nasty, how are you doing out there, buddy? That was a heck of a play you made in the first inning to keep the party animals off the board. Hey, I pride myself on being an athlete, all right? Somebody's got to prove physical for athletes. <laughs> all right, now you've got five, six, seven. Noah Fisher, Tanner Thomas, and Chase Aka. And you're calm, cool, collected as per usual. You know, I'm just having fun. I've been my whole life, you know, nothing new. Just a little bit more people here. Out about that, but not as many as we're in Minute Maid Park when you had a scoreless frame last Saturday. That, that must have been pretty special, huh? Oh, it was fun. It was a dream come true. All right, Fluky, if you can still hear us, we've banished you to the shadow realm. We're letting Ms. Nasty take center stage here, and then the two of you can jaw back and forth in the bottom of the end. I'm cut off right now. He wants us to jaw back and forth in the bottom. Of the Noah, how are you attacking Noah at the dish? Um, you know, probably. Uh, that's just what he's saying. Whatever you guys want to do. Wow. That was a nice hook. Because you can't hear me, right? 69 miles an hour. Nice. Go ahead, tell me how many of Trackman likes you, dude. I love Trackman. Two one pitch. It's an out. Can of corn. Oh! Oh! Reese Alexiades pulls off the tornado catch. That's my right fielder. His third trick play of the season and one of the most impressive plays we've seen all World Tour with nobody out. It's Reese Alexiades playing it aggressively to start this second frame. What a grab! Appreciate that. I can no longer hear out of my right ear. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Delano said the same thing about a week ago. That was on a Reese Hampton trick play. Now Tanner Thomas. Head two and up. Three oh, Cheddar right down the chute. Oh, Ooh. just misses outside. Thomas will grab the ball for a sprint. All right. Well, a little ground ball, huh? Those are fun. Those are fun, and that's rare for you. That's only your second ball for a sprint of the season given up. I like to found the zone, stay in there. Jackie. 
Just setting up the double play. See if you can do it against Chase Aka. Why not? Nice That's moves there, Noah. Oh, thank you. I pride myself on it. Oh, that's a good move. Keep Tanner honest over there, okay? Got to. Oh, one pitch. Do it! Ah! Just out of the reach of Gabe Howell. And down the left field line. Thomas getting the wave around. The relay from Cox! Get out! Not in time, no tag applied. As you said, though, a great slide by Tanner Tinder Thomas. Uh, all right. You got the ground ball. It was just hit to the wrong spot. Good work by Chase Anka. He's been absolutely scorching hot to start this tour. The Party Animals' best hitter overall is now tied for the tour lead with his 12 runs driven in. Get another look at the slide into the dish. Just pretty impressive that Mike Mavasis and the party just have the luxury of batting their poor leader in OP, or their team leader in OPS Plus, I should say, in the seventh spot. Uh, here comes old Taji. The specialty walk up for the pride of Mandeville, Louisiana. In his last three years of college ball right here in Baton Rouge at Southern University. Switch hitter, of course, will hit from the right side. What's the plan of attack against Porter? Uh, just not let him get on. I like that. Drive, Stay in. But Robert Stay Anthony in. Cruz has room. Nice jumping catch from Rack as Acuff tags and gets to third. Oh boy, Rack. That was scary. <laughs> A phenomenal leaping grab up against that left field wall for Rack. He did not enter banana ball as a natural Let's outfielder. Go! Has done a lot of work to, to be able to play left field so well. And yeah, you're fired up, Niz. You got the final oh, yeah. out there. You can't leave that early. Got away from the catching. Wow. Tag how, early. How about that? All right, Niz, we'll keep you on the mic, and we'll bring Flukey back in. Sean Fluke. We'll chat with both of you guys in a minute. First, our Party Animals correspondent, Drake Toll. Biko, Josh, I'll tell you what, coming to Louisiana and seeing a whole plethora of Louisiana animals all over this place has been crazy. From being greeted by Mike the Tiger on LSU's campus to fans that were tailgating a banana ball game at 8 a.m. this morning and all around this complex. And the guys have returned the favor from walk-ups to walk-outs to the dances that have all been Louisiana or Cajun or Creole specific the relationship between banana ball, whether it's party animals or bananas, and this state has become one that's so close in a single weekend that it's blown all of us away, myself included. There's a reverence, a respect for the baseball knowledge in Louisiana, the baseball knowledge on LSU's campus, and now the party animals and the bananas knowledge of this state that was brought to Baton Rouge this weekend. From calling Baton Rouge to the jambalaya in the parking lot, this weekend has been all about the boot. And I cannot emphasize how much that's meant to all of us and hopefully to all of these fans. Biko, Josh, this whole state's a party. They are gonna party on. Let's get Drake Toll and Emmy. That was unbelievable storytelling. I thought he just liked screaming with kids. That guy could be a documentary filmmaker if he so desired. Holy moly, it, it has been a really special Banana Ball debut here in the Big Raggedy. There's something so unique about Louisiana. As you hear the full capacity crowd belting out some Bon Jovi. 
Some love for the pride of the Garden State there. There's a looseness in the air. There is a love and a camaraderie that you really feel with everybody around these parts. And now, there's nothing to do with the great state of Louisiana, but we are a day away from St. Patrick's. So Robert Anthony Cruz with an Irish jig up to the dish. And an excellent one at that. Put that guy in an Irish pub and see those people get lit, as the kids would say. <laughs> All that man needs is a pint of Guinness if he fit right in. Healthy hack and a foul ball. One of the more exciting banana ball rookies we've had here in 2024. Washington Nationals minor leaguer in 2021. The social media superstar ever since then. And naturally, Banana Land the perfect place for Rack to create a long-term career. Nice piece of hitting behind going too. Defends the plate well. And the inning tying run aboard just like that. It was one of those kind of just defense swings or trying to battle it off and Rack able to put that over Chase Acuff and shortstop's head in the left center there. Excellent piece of hitting, and Rack told me a couple nights ago that he feels like he's made some real progressions at the plate recently, so we may really start to see an offensive breakout soon for Rack. Yeah, Cruz told us when we chatted with him in the prep season that he would be swinging for the fences every time he got up to the dish. We saw that twice, foul ball and a swing and a miss, but then a really impressive adjustment when it comes to the approach with two strikes. As he shortens up, shoots it into left center, and now he moves up to second on a pass ball. Just a little whiff with the leather there from Taj Porter in the inning tying run in scoring position. And it's been a minute since Taj Porter has been behind the dish for the party animals. He's been EHing the last two games after having a collision with Dan Oberst in Savannah, Georgia a couple weekends ago. So there's always a little bit of an adjustment period getting back behind the dish for sure. Bill Leroy just barely fouled down the third baseline. Reggie Liggins there making the call. Vincent Chapman backing him up. What a tour we're having for Bill Leroy from a fantastic rookie in rack on second to a co-captain of this squad in his seventh year as a banana, third as a pro. He's hitting 364 and pacing all hitters with a 483 on base percentage. And that's the name of the game for Bill Leroy. He's always been at his best when he's been able to get on base successfully. Here, though, we'll ground this one over to Chase Acuff, who juggles it for just a second, but is able to gather the ball and throw it onto Jason Swan to retire the Bananas backstop. 89 miles an hour off the bat of Leroy, according to Trackman. This is the left side, so Rack can't advance. An unproductive out as the baton pass to Brandon Crosby. Rack back to second after the pickoff attempt from Porter need to get dirty in his kilt. At the dish, another very exciting banana ball rookie. Brandon Crosby came up in the clutch a week ago in Minute Maid with a pinch hit double to lead off the eighth inning. Ended up leading to the Bananas tying that game and then walking it off in the ninth. Bananas are still trying to figure out the perfect part in the order to bat Brandon Crosby. But what I do know is I feel like he's an excellent guy to man kind of the later part or the, the deeper part of this lineup to be able to set the table for the DR Meadows and Gabe Howells at the top. In Banana Ball's college debut, as we've got a 3-1 count here on Crosby, he'd be the perfect man to ask about universities. He spent time across five different colleges in a roller coaster ride of a collegiate career as he sends this one right side. Swan on his horse and tracking it down. Rack fakes like he would tag the third. How would serve an arm from Swan. And two big outs for Fluke. He's one away from notching a point for the party animals. 
Great play by Jason Swan, ranging into foul territory. And we've got to remember, Swanee was kind of recruited to be an outfielder in banana ball originally. Was playing right and left field for the Bananas in the 2022 Summer Series. So good job by Rack not testing what is a powerful Jason Swan arm. What a piece from Jackson Olsen. All the way to the wall in left center. He thought he might have walked off the inning, but the inning's tied, Jackie. He'll take two bases and collect a ribeye. And in a scoreless game in points, second inning now locked at a run of pieces. Malachi Mitchell will pinch run for the great eight. Jackson Olsen all laughs after that double. <laughs> and good work by him. I mean, he was halfway up to second base while he was kind of already going into the celebration and luckily held off there. I don't think he would have had three bases had he been hustling out of the box anyhow. No harm, no foul. And how about this? Baton Rouge's resident airbender for the weekend. A new haircut for Ryan Cox. And boy, oh boy, a full new character has been created from it. I mean, we've seen some impressive trick plays and some airbender celebrations from Ryan Cox. Now he'll see if he can bend this ball into fair play, fall in for a hit and walk up the inning for the Bananas. This one into left center field, just out of the grab of Reese Hampton. And it's Ryan Cox coming up with his sixth walk off this season for the Bananas. Tied for second on the tour. Ryan Cox, not just a magician with the glove, a wizard with the wand as well. Much like Aang in Avatar, Ryan Cox the hero for the Bananas. What a two out rally. The Olsen double to tie it, the Cox single to win the frame. And now Maceo Harrison and the boys will dance us to the third. Bananas lead one point to Zilch. Good job by Maceo Harrison with Malachi Mitchell, Alex Ziegler, and Christian Deerman joining in on the fun. They exit the field, Jared Donaldson enters. Always fun when it's Donnie Day. 2022's Peach Bowl Conference Pitcher of the Year, the Splitter Specialist, will come and try and keep this game with the Bananas out in front. Fifth appearance of the tour for Jared Donaldson, his second in relief. And the last time we saw him as a reliever for the Bananas, just struggled with control. Issued four ball four sprints, was overthrowing just a little bit. He's going to hopefully be able to improve on that tonight as Dustin Baber is going to lead off against him. And how about this? Getting in the St. Patrick's Day mood, Dustin Baber is going to start the night and chug a green beer. Normally he waits until his third plate appearance to chug a brewski. Here he just pulls one down from the get-go. It's a bold move. Bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out. Hot shot, diving stop, Ryan Cox. Oh my goodness, deja vu. He did it last night and he does it again here on Saturday. We always talk about the trick plays with Ryan Cox. You see, with the mask celebration, Ryan Cox, can we even tell if that's him or not? <laughs> Some eyes wide shut action here. As Drake Toll a couple innings ago was talking about the buy-in to 
what Louisiana and Baton Rouge is all about. Looks like the Bananas participating in a masquerade here. And with the mask on, Ryan Cox with an incredible play. Now we've got Coxie coming in, a little Irish jig action. Meadows and Olsen joining the fun. Who's gonna throw the pitch? Jared Donaldson. And he misses outside with the heater. Donnie right around 90 miles an hour consistently with the fastball, about 89 to 92. And he gets a bouncer to Cox. Behind the back with the glove flip, cleans it up. And a scoop from Crosby at the other end. One heck of a pick at first base by Brandon Crosby to save that trick play for Ryan Cox. Now up to 32 on this 2024 <laughs> World Tour. He is so smooth. Again, we talk about his trick plays, but we saw to start this inning against Dustin Baber, a guy with so much range and capable of making all of the big league plays. Bouncer to Jackson Olsen. He will go under his leg. Another trick play for the great eight. Number 13 in 14 tries for Olsen. Take out the 3-2-2 there from Jared Donaldson. He threw that inning in one minute and 33 seconds with a crazy bunch of impressive defense behind him. That is one of the most remarkable defensive innings we've seen in banana ball this year. Hang a star on Coxie's diving play, a trick play for Ryan and Olsen alike. And now we have to get it down to Jesse Cole for a brand new promotion we're calling Menno Pops. We got a bunch of balloons. We got some chairs over there. We are gonna put the husbands on the chairs. The wives are gonna have to run down and pop these balloons in unique ways. We're calling this one Mena Pops. All right. Husband, get to your positions. All right, Debbie and Marie, are we ready? We have to pop three balloons to win. On your mark, get set, go. Here they go. Let's pop it on those husbands. 48 and 49 years. The weird hug. You, there's one. There we go. She's going. Where we go? Marie is going to break. Now he's on his lap. This is going to be interesting. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, no. Yes, it's coming down to the last one. Marie and. Oh, wow. This is getting weird. Let's. Oh, we have a winner. It is Marie and Frank, 49 years married. Let's hear it for them. And our new one, we call Menopops. Snaps for everybody watching this ball game for the entertainment department on that promotion. Sean Fluke out for his third inning of work. He is the top of the order to, to deal with. Pierre Meadows reached on a trick play, missed his first time. Fluky was able to strand him on third base and prevent the Bananas from claiming a point in the first inning. They did walk off the second and lead one to nothing. Hot shot past the dive of Chase Aka. Boy, is DR Meadows impressive. 431 batting average to pace the tour. It's getting higher and higher. 23 hits now for DR Meadows for 16 games of the tour. And we've been counting a stat called weighted runs above average for DR Meadows. He's at 10.4, which means he's equal to one offensive win for this banana scheme already this season. Right. Very impressive. That doesn't even factor any of the unbelievable defense that he pulls off in center field, certainly saving runs and earning victories out there as well. Lukey has to worry about him now. The uh, squibber, that bloomer will bounce to Baber across the first, just barely not in time. Howell busting it down the line will beat it. And Fluke emphatically letting his dugout know that Howell did beat the rap. We should not challenge it. Great banana ball field from Bryson Bloomer. Bouncing that one over to Dustin Baber at the bag. And how about this? We've got the fan challenge pop for this play. They're gonna try and win it for the party animals. One of the rare times in banana ball we've seen the fan challenge popped for the party animals, believe it or not. Drake Toll suspiciously close to the scene of the crime. 
What a job by Dustin Baber. Yeah, Vincent Chapman says he was safe by a mile. I, I think I agree. We haven't gotten the best views on the broadcast yet. We're just flying right through it. He's safe. Yeah, it's, you can't overturn that. We're flipping all over the place here. Call the call is going to stand here, guys. Confirm. Confirm, yes. Out. Let's get it down to our party animals correspondent, Drake Toll. The field is confirmed, but I have the fan that just popped the fan challenge for the party animals. Now, that doesn't happen very often, sir. Why did you use your fan challenge for the party animal? I like cold beer. So there was a barter pregame where the party animals asked our friend here, how can we get you to use the challenge for us? And what did you say? Free beer? And he got a cold beer. The party animals get the challenge, but this guy wasted it. No problem. We'll power through. Thank you for the party animal challenge. Thank you. Back to you guys. Party on. Thank you, Drake Toll. Didn't know that our man challenge representatives could be bribed. Drake Toll, potential documentary filmmaker and clearly one of the best investigative journalists we have in Banana Ball as well. Two two count on Dan Obert. Dave Howell's got great speed on first base. Swept 31 bags in the Pioneer League last summer. And Sean Fluke gives the fans what they want. Dan Oberst will respond accordingly in the box. That's a great move by Dan Oberst. And now you've got shirtless on shirtless here. Who will come out on top? It's Luke missing low, and now already a 3-2 count against these guys. See if Howell takes off. Just one out here in the bottom of the third. There goes Gabe. Good take by Dan Oberst. Party animals need to get it to all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher quickly. Oberst is going to get a stop, or Howell rather gets a stop sign at third. Oberst slides in safely at second and shows off what he's got underneath his kilt to his dugout. So a two-base sprint for the Nanners DH, and he pushes the inning-winning run to third base. Still with just one out for Michael Vitamin D. This is the right guy you want up if you're the Bananas. Michael Deeb has always been one of the best batters with runners in scoring position throughout his career. He's got a 333 mark this tour and walk-offs in each of his last two ball games. Changeup misses outside. He flew out to deep center field his first time. Cranks it, fair down the first baseline. Dave Howell could cartwheel home. Instead, he'll jog, and the Nanners double their lead in the all-important points department. They're up 2 nothing. with the fans right behind home plate. Where we have a Jesse Cole doppelganger. I thought Yellow Tux was down there. Turns out it's a fan just front and center. The banana band will blast away. As we have three innings in the books from Baton Rouge. Nanners lead two to nothing. And there's the real Jesse Cole. Son of a gun, we got him. Rest assured, when you can't find Jesse, just have the banana band start playing, and you'll find him dancing along with those guys. Excellent point, Josh. Appreciate everybody watching. 
Vince Banana Ball broadcast. A little Saturday night fun from the Red Stick, Baton Rouge. With Josh Tolepsky, I am Pico Scala. Of a ball game on our hands thus far. Boatload of trick plays. A web gem or two. And the Nanners trying to claim Louisiana in a series that is split at a game apiece. Currently up two to nothing as we head to the fourth. Yeah, it's been all bananas in this game so far. Four trick plays for those guys and already two walk-offs. P-I-S awesome. Wondering when Banana Ball will make its way to Fenway Park. It's a good question. It will be June 8th. Our young sport will go to Major League Baseball's oldest stadium. Big swing and a miss. On the first offering from Donaldson by Jake Skoll. Two, three, and four in the Animals lineup. As Donnie fires a 90 mile an hour fastball up, according to Trackman. That was Donnie trying to mess with Jake Skull's timing just a little bit. A little bit of a stutter step before delivering the 0-1 one, the one pitch. Now Jackson Olsen has this one hit his way. Goes under the legs with the flip to Eric Jones Jr. at first base. And Olsen with two trick plays on the night. On back-to-back -back plays defensively. He got Reese Hampton to end the top of the third. He's up to 14 trick plays on the tour. Fourth most overall, he just trails Aka, Faber, and Cox from third to first. And now with a 1-0 count on Bryson Bloomer, Vincent Chapman will call time and dust off the dish. Look, when you've got a splitter specialist in Jared Donaldson, you would think there are gonna be a lot of ground balls. It's gonna be very advantageous for Ryan Cox and hopefully for Jackson Olsen as well, who wants to get in on this trick play leaderboard discussion. How about the toss of the mask there from Vincent Chapman? Trackman had it at 93 miles an hour. Vince also at the top of umpire dance leaderboards. <laughs> Correct. He's currently, he's currently leading. Bryson Wheeler in second place. Reggie Liggins in third. He's kind of running away with it. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, he's boat racing the rest of the boys. Kind of hoping that Lathan, the kid umpire, could have entered the discussion yesterday, but not enough boogieing to reach the top five on the year. 1-0 to Bryson Bloomer, a pair of 2022 Bananas teammates facing off. And another 2022 Banana! DR Meadows goes full Superman in center field. What a catch! Had a phenomenal diving catch in the eighth inning last night. Here in the fourth comes up with another stellar grab. I mean, this guy is having a gold glove kind of season in center for the Bananas and went full extension in the kilt, no less. A request for everybody scoring this banana ball game at home. Slap a star on that one, please. A one count on Garrett Delano, the 2018 Collegiate Banana. John Olerud Award finalist. And Danny Hosley was current banana was when Delano was at Brown University, spent four years in the Ivy League and then transferred to Mercer for his fifth and final collegiate season. That one right on the outside corner, count even at two and two. There just aren't many players in baseball or banana ball for that matter who can start a game and then come in the next night and back clean up for you. So Delano has run a full count here and this guy is loaded with power as well for the party and it was probably a big reason why Mike Favese is one to try him in the cleanup hole tonight. Yeah, Delano pitched across five innings last night. Hitting the ball from the get-go for the Animals. And now on the payoff, he's able to spoil that one. Got a splitter, ended up in the zone. He fouls it away. Well, what we've seen from Garrett Delano more than anything offensively this season is he's battled a lot better and been able to draw a lot more ball four sprints. And looking for one here against Donnie, but chops this one to second base. Jackson Olsen looking for his third trick play of the night, and he will get it another under the leg flip to EJ. Jared Donaldson backflips going to the dugout, and it's a two minute and 38 second inning. Donnie is cruising. He's retired all six party animals he's faced as you get another look.
This one's the best of the bunch for Jackson Olsen with the kilt flying. He sends that thing right through the wickets. And he has three trick plays on the evening, 15 on the tour. What a night for Jackie. He also walked off the second inning with a double. As it is Hey Baby O'Clock. Here on the campus of LSU. First ever banana ball games on a college campus. The 300, 300 first, and 300 second straight sellouts in bananas and party animals history. It's great to see stilts, as well as the over 11,000 friends we brought with us getting in on the fun. company finish up hey baby here in baton rouge we have not just a local legend a national legend the head coach of the defending national champion lsu tigers kim mulkey in the booth how are you doing today i'm kim? doing great isn't this amazing it's so much fun to come out here and i don't have to coach for one thing <laughs> and i love music so i can't quit singing all right we love to hear that now i have to talk about your first pitch that counted tonight. It looked good from here. Vincent Chapman doesn't give you the call. <laughs> I thought if you're in the box on the right side, that's an inside pitch on the corner. Of course, <laughs> if you're on the left side, that's an outside pitch. But I thought it caught the corner, man. I've never seen Vince give out a tech in a <laughs> banana ball before. I've got to be honest. I'm not sure he knew how to do the motion to throw me out, really. <laughs> I saw him kind of hesitate, and I thought, okay, dude, I'm trying to get thrown out here, and he finally did it. Yeah, you, you gave it your best effort and finally got what you were looking for. Sean Fluke out for his fourth inning of work. Reese Alexiadis at the dish. And that one catches the inside corner. See, Vince he called didn't that give one. me that call. He didn't give me that call <laughs> on the first pitch. Ridiculous. You're going to have a word with him after the game. I'll tell you, I'm going to be looking for him. <laughs> Reese went down swigging to end the first inning. Clutch strikeout for Fluke. His only K of the night is this one. A mile high out to right center field. Skull's got a beat on it, backpedaling, grabs it at the track. Now, Kim, you see how much fun these guys have out on the field. How important is it for your team to be having fun to find success? Well, you know, at my level, it's a little bit more serious. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the fun part is winning when the game's over there and you've won. Uh, but I'm, I'm blessed. Listen, I have a great team. Uh, we won it all last year. Uh, we're very talented this year, and we'll find out tomorrow where we are going to be uh, sent for the NCAA playoffs. That's right. Number eight in the AP poll currently. And boy, oh boy, you folks have had some unbelievable battles so far on this year. It has been a lot of fun watching your LSU Tigers do what they do best every night out on the court. Well, as I said, I'm blessed to coach the talent, and we have a lot of wonderful, oh, that looks like a base hit down that right field line. Might be extra bases. Let's see. You called it. Let's see. You better get down. That's a double for Robert Anthony Cruz. Two for two on the night. Another great piece of hitting. He singled the opposite way his first time. And you're a natural at baseball play-by-play. -play. I mean, that was terrific. I don't know about that, but I played this sport before I played anything else. I played a year, 12-year-old Dixie Youth Baseball and two years of Pony League and made the all-star team, <laughs> two of the three. So I love this sport. Were they trying to recruit you for an at-bat tonight, too? No, no. I'm too old to swing a bat, but I sure can throw it. As you saw, they're like, Mom, you're 61 years old, and you still got, got it. And I'm like, hey, it's like riding a bicycle. It was a great looking pitch. Of course, you grew up less than an hour away. It's got to be really special to see this kind of an atmosphere in your home state here in Louisiana. Well, this is what we do at LSU. I mean, we fill the box. We fill the PMAC. We fill Tiger Stadium. If you love athletics, man, you can't go anywhere else and find it any more enthusiastic. Is there anything that you've seen from 
banana ball from the bananas or card animals that you feel like you could possibly bring back to your team? Well, first of all, I don't know. My team is pretty enthusiastic. <laughs> they have uh, these unbelievable personalities. And little tidbit, Flage Johnson, my rapper, is from Savannah. She wow. came last night. She was here last night, actually. Oh, that's awesome to hear that she was in the ballpark. Yeah, she's been all over local news in Chatham County. Of course, the national champion, she was a freshman last year. She is really fun to watch. She's a great player, and she just gets better and better. That one misses up. 1-1 one, one count here on Brandon Crosby. Cruz leads off second with two outs. Luke trying to keep the deficit at just two points. And uh -oh, that one uh -oh, knife foul ball. Oh, that was a tight one. That umpire at first, I guarantee you, he uh, probably played some basketball. Look how tall he is. Seven foot two. Yes. He'd be a good person to have around the rim. Another foul ball. Not catchable by the fans. Into the Bananas dugout. Now, how do you plan to spend the rest of your night here? Where have you been in the stadium, Tim? Well, I am lucky. I know somebody that has a suite, and I have my family in the suite, my daughter and son-in-law and my two grandchildren and my son-in-law's parents and other brother. I mean, we've got a whole suite full of them, and they're having the time of their life. They came in from Texas. Well, that warms the heart to hear. It's a family affair. Good piece by Brandon Crosby. It's not going to escape Alec Box Stadium, though as Sean Fluke holds serve, and it is still 2-0 bananas after four innings. Well, Kim Mulkey, a basketball Hall of Famer, we cannot thank you enough for spending some time with us here tonight. Listen, my pleasure. I have had a blast, and I'm just glad I didn't throw it in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Kim, have a great rest of your night. You thank guys you very take much. care. Across the United States, there, goes there are Coach over 400,000 children and teens in American sports, home. of course, especially basketball. Let's get it down to a legend of Banana Land. Together. Emily Cole for Bananas Foster Family of the Night. Bananas Foster. Tonight, Bananas Foster is celebrating Mikey Doucette. Mikey and his brother Sam were placed in foster care at the age of eight after suffering from a childhood full of abuse, neglect, and trauma. Separated from his brother, Mikey bounced around from home to home until he aged out at 18 with no support, no family, and no home. Over half of the kids who age out of foster care never receive a high school diploma, and only 3% obtain a college degree. But Mikey not only graduated high school, he also received a scholarship to go to college. Now, reunited, Mikey and Sam are together here tonight to enjoy their very first game. So fans, please help us celebrate Mikey for all that he has overcome and for what he is doing for the foster care community now. Always as cool as it gets when you get the big group hug celebrating the superheroes in the foster community. And we get to welcome in a superhero of Banana Land, Ryan Cox. Gentlemen, how are we how doing? How special is it for you, man, to get to be a part of those big group hugs? Unbelievable to, to see what those families do and those, those children overcome is, is so special to be a part of. And seeing what the Coles put together with the foundation, just being able to help families across the country, it's so special to be a part of. That's good stuff. I, and speaking of good stuff, 
You are having one heck of a weekend in Baton Rouge, man. I mean, this haircut's legitimately giving you superpowers. Yeah, it, it felt right when we left Houston and all the great shortstops that LSU, as I missed that ball, as uh, <laughs> LSU's had, Bregman, Kramer Robinson, it's an honor to share the same field with them. Now, Coxie, you've got you a know, phenomenal guys, diving play. I've a lot of shortstops in my life, but a Ryan Cox is the best one well. I've ever played with. Oh, <laughs> thank you for that, Jackson. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan, you've got a diving play at short. You've got a trick play as well and a walk-up double. What's been the best part of the night? Probably the diving play with the mask on because I couldn't see. It was just like a guess of where that ball was going to be. And uh, that, that was pretty cool. The backside double after the avatar entrance, really, really something special. Um, babe. Seventh walk off of the season for you, Coxie. Feeling good down there. I'm feeling pretty dangerous. I just want to get up to the plate and help the boys out. Well, it's going to be five, six, seven for the end. There's no Fisher here. How about Jared Donaldson pouring in strikes? He's retired all six guys he's faced. Yeah, it looks great. He's filling up the zone. He's letting his defense work for him. Jackson's got three trick plays already. I mean. And you have a diving play and a trick play of your own. Five of the six outs, ground balls to you and Olsen. It's middle taking care of business. I feel like I'm going to get one right here on this splitter. Oh, fastball away. You've got good eyes to see the signs from short, man. Oh, I stare at Bill Leroy all night. Just trying to see what he's doing. Trick play on the mic, thank you very much. Home, baby, Coxie, that was delightful with the kill time. Something nice and easy, you know I had the mic on, wanted to make sure we took care of business. That felt good, tally it. Second trick play of the night, 33rd of the tour. Now speaking of kilts, like tell us, what is it like to play a full game in kilts? Is, is, it's got to be different than just wearing the normal jersey. It's different, but it's, it's weirdly freeing. I mean, I'm having a good time out here, feel like I can move my legs. Uh, that trick play was a little bit difficult because I don't have the usual range of motion down there. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's why I went behind the back on the first one today. But that was a doozy. A little kick save and a beauty on that one. Just staying with it, trying to, like, the mask, right? You can't see that bottom third of the ball. So <laughs> hopefully it hops up, back up somewhere to you. And then your guy Showtime on the other end of the diamond picking you up. Needed that. Didn't make a great throw. Showtime bails me out. That's what it's all about. A little 6-3 with some flair. Speaking of flair, Bill Leroy. Some unique catching positions here. He's unbelievable. I don't know how he feels comfortable down there. <laughs> Just another day at the ballpark. 2-2. Two -two. Good pitch, good pick. Wow. <laughs> That's unreal. I hope he doesn't lay down here. Yeah, I was going to say, it might be a ball four. He's got to get up to his feet. Pay off to Tanner Thomas. Oh, yeah. How about that? Oh, we're going to hit this line dance. 90 mile an hour heater for the K. And all nine bananas in the field nailing the line dance. <laughs> Donnie's had this all year. I don't think I've got it right once. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, get me back to saddlebags. I need more practice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't think you did a lot of line dancing up in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, did you? No, not too much. I grew up on some country music, but there was definitely no line dancing. I came down to the south to see a whole new form. I, how you're born and you just know these dances is beyond me. <laughs> Couple offerings below the knees to Chase Acup, who doubled in a run his first time. Acuff's going to get aggressive here. He wants to keep that home run lead up. Donnie's throwing a little fastball, ground ball. 3-0. Oh. Chase with the two bombs, as you mentioned, tied for the tour lead. He's got to have the green light here. Yeah, you got to let him swing it with two outs. He'll take the sprint. Coming to you, Cox. Got it. Nice glove-to-glove -glove work. You can stay right there. <laughs> Hey, we're talking about how you're tied for the tour lead in bombs, and as a shortstop to shortstop, I just want to say I'm really proud of you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Love you. I'll see you later. That's great on-field interviewing work, Coxie. Uh, he's my friend, so I feel comfortable going up to him and you know, just chatting it up a little bit. He ripped a nice trick play tonight. It's a fact on Bill Leroy. 
give, I'm gonna give Bill some crap about that 90. It looked like he stopped running a little bit. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> uh oh, halftime show. Donnie better get the switch off. Inside corner. Time for the halftime show. We'll all shut up and watch the national champion LSU dance team do what they do best. Unbelievable. That was one of the coolest performances I've seen live. That's why they're the national champions. How about Stani just sent you a laser beam into left? Yeah, that's going to be a souvenir for a lucky fan right there. You didn't think about joining in there, Coxie? Uh, I like the way my left feet work, but they don't work that good. <laughs> <laughs> Taj Porter back in the box. And now behind one and two. Splitter there from Donaldson. Oh, he's got to do throw a ball in left field and then throw a strike. No. Let's go. <laughs> How about that? Ryan Cox, thank you so much for joining us, my dear friend. Gentlemen, I think I'm coming up to hit if you want to keep me, but thank you for having me. Oh, baby, let me get a look here. Oh, you're due up. Yes, Send sir. it. Send we it. Love it. Let's go. As we look forward to Ryan Cox joining us on the mic. The young professor Atlanta. talking us through Bridges, and we have three fans. some TikToks with Noah Bridges. With and you get to we'll check in on those guys and so chat with Coxie in a minute. First contestant, seven-year-old, Abigail. All right, Abigail, Noah, let's see what you got. Give it up for Abigail, that's Abigail and Noah. All right, next up, let's bring out Macy. Macy is 12 years old. Macy, let's see what you got, girl. Shark, hit it. round of applause right, for gentlemen. Mikey there. Now we bring in to the broadcast Dustin Baber from second base. So Vico. Babe Daddy, how is your evening going, buddy? Uh, it could be better if Cox didn't catch that one. I'd be kind of hit, but no. It's all right. We're doing okay. Live food review, Jackson Olsen. You know what that is? All right, we'll get the rating 
I think it's Pastalaya. Shout out to Solu hooking the, uh, hooking the team up with some amazing, I don't want to say anything wrong, so I'm just going to say some amazing Asian food. Yeah, I, is it Chapman joining in? Let's see where the pastelaya goes next. All right, here we go. Jackson's up, so he knows the chance. Nice front door bender there. Now, the trick play race is piping hot babes. Oh, yeah. And this is a guy that has given you a few opportunities on the tour. Oh, yeah. I can always. Ow, that hurts. Uh, I gotta stop missing them, Biko. I don't know which camera to look at to talk to you or the people at home, but I'm looking straight at you. I gotta stop missing tricks. I think I missed six this year or seven. You're 23 for 29. That's not good enough, Biko. That's not good, that's well, below what I should be. And I could be right there in the race, but I'm letting it get away from me by not pulling them off. I hear you, man, but the nice thing in the missed trick lane in the first inning is Fluky picking you up. Oh yeah, I could always count on that guy to go in there and battle. Boy, Jackson. And, uh, boy, Jackson. Jackson Olsen is scorching hot. Two for two with two doubles. He's four for his last four. And Get now, off. We welcome Ryan Cox into there the broadcast. Is. Hi guys, welcome there back. Is. There's the thief himself. Coxie, are you gonna be mean to Dustin Baber here and end his mic'd up inning just like this? <laughs> Hopefully, that's my job here. Sadly, I can't hear Cox. Here, I can hear him whisper, that's about it. Oh, oh, no. okay. That's all we need you to hear, Baber. <laughs> Cox. Yeah. Oh, gotta get it. Did a job, did a job, did a job. Say. Oh, almost beat the rap there, Ryan. Uh, didn't uh. deserve the hit. Hey, that's a good work getting Jackie over to third. Job done. Hey, that's what I was trying to say. I got it so you could go home because he couldn't catch it. What's this? DR Meadows. Ah, yeah, here we go. How about this? This is a beauty right here. Yeah, this is one of the coolest moments we've seen in banana ball history, so we did it all three nights here in Baton Rouge. Oh, you have to. I mean, after seeing the opening night, uh, seeing the opening night, this camaraderie that came with Gabe Powell's version of it, you can't, you can't go away from this. This crowd is ecstatic for this song. Yeah, it was Gabe Howell. Thursday night, Bill Leroy last night. Oh, yeah. And now DR Meadows steps into the leading role. Shout out to the uh, girl, I believe, can I say this? Uh, shout out to the violin. To be able to walk through the crowd and play like this is very impressive. And in the pouring rain last night. Uh, yeah. Like, we're not talking about that enough, I don't think. The extreme challenges and adversity she faced. She just pushed right through and played an amazing song. We're going to try to pick off Flash at third base. It's probably going to go terribly wrong, but we're going to try our best. Is this the overtime pick? Oh, I'm going to step off. Okay. Boys are having to switch it up here. Not having the best offensive night. Um, so, you got to get a little flashy here on defense and make some stuff happen. about this crowd, babes? You know, I thought Houston, Houston is amazing. That, that experience right there, I'll never forget in my life, but coming in here after Houston, I was like, oh, it's gonna be smaller. They brought as much energy as Houston by far. They've come in here and shown out. And I can't speak on it enough that this town was looking forward to us and they did not at all disappoint. They are ecstatic for the bananas and Barrios to come back. We've talked about it a decent amount, but we're in the home of the defending national champions in baseball. This is a city that knows baseball very well. Oh, yeah. I, well, what I was more surprised by, which I don't think something that says that one pitch, I can tell you. There it is. Um, oh! That was close right there, wasn't it? Uh, a midweek game, we came on watched the game against North Dakota, I believe. Is that North Dakota? Yes, North oh, Dakota no. State. North Dakota State. They had a, a 
very, very packed house for a midweek game. With having been in college, midweek games, you can't even count on a trainer to show up. So, <laughs> I don't know what that any. But uh, yeah, they, this town loves some baseball, let me tell you. Deer Meadows puts the bananas up, 3 nothing in points. Dustin Baber, best oh, yeah. of luck the rest of the evening. I know we've got some more trick plays in your back pocket. Oh, yeah, you just wait and see, Biko. Just wait and see. Let me see if I can go swing a stick here. We appreciate you, dude. Love you, Beak. Love you, too. There goes Derek Ginger as the bananas doing the cha-cha slide. And they're doing 100 stomps. It said left foot, 100 stomps. And they're doing them. <laughs> the archer leading the charge. Christian Deerman sick of it. Kyle Lewis exhausted. But Andy Archer, what a mensch that man is. He is just jubilant. And they will cha-cha their way out of it. Well, at least Andy will. <laughs> 100 stops. Josh has got more than 100 stops. He's just absolutely blasting away up here. Welcome up into the broadcast booth. There is my stomping partner, Josh Kalevsky. I am Biko Scala. Josh, you have your first PowerPoint of the tour for us. Uh, that's correct, actually, my second after we had one in Tampa, but uh, we're going to wow. take a look back, back at the glory back. days here, my friend, and we're going to talk about college okay. by Josh Tulevsky. Uh So, of course, they are pros of college, and as we look at it, college football, you can catch up on your reading it's even if your team is not that good. Uh, shots, can't do those anymore, I'll tell you what. See what he's reading. Uh, your cool bartender friend who gets you free drinks, like my good buddy Alfred here, shown top right. You don't know that. Girls, they are pros, and there's a lot of them at college, you know? That's pretty cool. I am sports. There you see me in my heyday catching a pass from my quarterback. Intramural. Yes, intramural okay. sports. Tailgates, look at the LSU yeah. fans. I That's mean, fun. Are you kidding me? It's the atmosphere that you want to be a part of. I love the overalls. College traditions. At Brown University, you can go and see the brown bear who has a lampshade in him. Canceled classes, always a pro. Never seen that bear. Okay, cool. Uh, syllabus week, always a pro as well. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest here. Another pro, secretly feeling sick in the port john after having one too many drinks with your friend's dad at the tailgate. Hi, Mr. Jarvis. Hope you're watching and doing well. Now, cons, studying, parking violations. Bad. Those are cons. Girls, they scare me. Oh, Having no money. Finals week. Dining hall food poisoning. Now the bouncer won't. who won't let you in at the bar because you're violently barking at people. That didn't happen to me. That happened to my buddy, Eric. <laughs> and the frat guys who blare Blake Shelton every morning before the football game. You know who you are, fifth floor of Russell Hall. <laughs> uh, overall, my Josh's score on college, 9.6 out of 10 textbooks. So you approve. You recommend it. Oh, I approve of college. Are you kidding me? Here is Dustin Baber, fresh off the mic. Jared Donaldson entering his fourth inning of relief. He has been stupendous. Two strikeouts. Only one base runner. It was a ball four sprint. After Kyle Lewis came in and threw four no-hit innings last night. Donnie working on three. And that promptly is ended by Dustin Baber who said he was up there searching for a knock. I mean, what else would he be doing? But he's got himself a base hit, and he's one for two on the night. And Baber, he chucked another beer before that at bat, too. Good so point. He's now one for two with two beers in his system. Two green beers. Two green. Thank you. I needed that correction. Well, it's, it's, it's more of a plus than a correction. There's nothing wrong with two beers. It's just an added descriptor. No, we need to get the facts right. We are. A day away from St. Patrick's Day. Where we have turned the beer green, much like the Chicago River. Jason Swan in the 10 hole, bounced to do a trick play from Ryan Cox at short his first time. Donaldson's fastball consistently right at 90 miles an hour tonight. 90 to 91, according to Trackman. That's a barrel from Swanee. In the left center field, Baber will take a turn, but about Mason head back to second. And from the two men in the bottom of the order, 
Two base hits, two guys aboard. To the top we go to the dangerous Reese Hampton. Yeah, and the Bananas hoping that they haven't left in Jared Donaldson too long now after, after surrendering back-to-back -back singles. And Donnie's facing the party animals a second time through the order now. And so they've seen what he has to offer, obviously communicating about it in the dugout. Now to see if they can hang a crooked number and get their first point in this ballgame. Bouncer to second. Bouncer to Cox from Olsen. The return to first, not in time. That's just burning speed from Reese Hampton. Olsen and Cox could not have turned it any quicker. Jackie gets his fourth trick play of the night, 16th of the tour as we get another gander here. Quick exchange, no time wasted on the bounce. Cox put his whole body into the heave to first. Reese just used his wheels to beat the rap. So runners on the corners with one down. Here's the donut hitter, Jake Skoll. And for Jackson Olsen, a piece of banana ball history for himself. He's got a single game high in trick plays now with four tonight and still looking to tack on more, of course. The banana single game record for trick plays is five. It's been done by Ryan Cox twice and Dalton Malden once. Pickoff attempt and Hampton able to scamper back to the bag just in time. Johnny communicating something to Skull there at the dish. They're barking back and forth. Clearly not on the same page. Donaldson heaves that over to first with some gusto. And that trick play from Jackson Olsen as well. The tenth we've seen tonight between the Bananas and Party Animals on pretty good paces. We are only here in the top of the sixth. Couple Georgia boys doing battle here. Donaldson out of Albany. Goal out of Woodstock. And the count now three and one. Skoll was the tour leader in sprints last year. Cranks it, fair down the first base line. Faber scores easily. Hampton chugging around third. Skoll thinking about three bases himself. The relay from Olsen on a hop is mishandled. Looks like Jake would have been in there safely either way. It is a two-run triple. Skull's second three-bagger of the season. And the party animals they have a two-spot here in the sixth. And back-to-back -back games with a triple for Jake Skull, who, again, if you want the, if you look up in a dictionary, the definition of aggressive base runner, there's probably a picture of the party animal's left fielder that's accompanying that definition. Jake Skull with a big knock, and he was wise to look for a meter down the middle from Jared Donaldson, which is what he got, considering Donnie did not want to allow the ball for a sprint there more than anything to Skull. Trackman had the fastball coming in at 89, leaving Skull's bat at 93. And now the Bananas have the corners in. Olsen and Cox in the middle playing about medium depth. Grayson Bloomer, the tour leader in RBIs a year ago. Washington, Kentucky native, behind 0-1. 0 for 2 on the night. Robbed of a base hit last time on a fantastic diving catch by his Bananas CPL teammate in 2022, D.R. Meadows. And this two-run inning has really got to fire the party animals up. Last year, there were a lot of times where one run scored in the top half for the party animals was enough to get past the Bananas and earn them a point. But we've seen this Bananas offense a lot more loaded as compared to last year. So it's now more imperative for the party animals to score multiple runs in innings on this year's tour. Bryson Bloomer, the tour leader in hit by pitches a year ago. Gets one square in the back, will twerk it out. And jog down to first. Runners once again at the corners with one away. Grayson hit for the first time this year. He was the only man in double digits last year, plugged 14 times. He's pinch run for by Jordan Hussein, the designated runner. He's got great wheels, two for three on the tour in his stolen base attempts. Garrett Delano behind, 0-1. Break out in a ground out tonight. The man out of Callahan, Florida, he gets jammed. Eric Jones Jr. calls it, makes the catch. And that is a big second out. Here's Jesse Cole. The world's tallest pitcher. 
Please welcome Dakota Stilts Albritton. Donaldson hands the ball off to the 10 foot nine inch. Dakota Stilts Albritton, you look at the numbers across an inning and two thirds on the tour. He's given up one sprint, besides that he's been infallible. Just comes in with two outs in a lot of these situations and is able to get outs quickly for the Bananas. Again, he works so hard at being able to execute pitches and pound this strike zone. It's clearly paying off, yet to get a strike out on the tour, but also yet to give up a hit to the party animals. Noah Fisher will swing it in this big spot. The DH has grounded out and flown out. Both were into trick plays, one at short, one to right. He gets a slider. Sends it a mile high, DR Meadows underneath it, and will make the catch. Looks like he was thinking about a backflip, but with two runs already home, and two more certainly scoring on the play, if he moved the trick play, he will grab it casually. One pitch, one out, Dakota still saw Britain, continues to roll in 2024. You not entertained. The Bananas lead by three points, the party animals with a good chance to notch their first point of the night as you get another look at DR thinking about flipping, disappointed in himself, and still ever the showman waving goodbye to Noah Fisher. Let's get it down to our Party Animals correspondent, Drake Toll. All right, Biko, Josh, I got a couple of fans here that who I think the apple fell far from the tree on this one. We got Charlotte and James. Charlotte, who's your favorite team? Bananas. James, who is your favorite team? You gotta have a party animals on that one. The Louisiana animals have taken over here, but it seems as though James has not been able to influence his own household as who to root for. James, how did Charlotte stray so far away? We're gonna have to ask her on that one. Charlotte, why are you a Bananas fan and not a party animals fan? Tim Baldwin's on their team. If Dalton Baldwin was a party animal, would you be a party animal? Yeah. Nailed it, guys. Dalton Baldwin is the only defining factor between Charlotte and the party animals. James, what does it mean to you to have the party animals, the bananas, here in Louisiana with this kind of atmosphere at Alex Bach? It's all in the party, man. It's in the name. It's all in the party. The Louisiana animals taking over this entire section and half of that one too. Josh Biko, party on. Thank you very much, Drake Toll. How about that? Dalton Molden, the difference between a fan supporting the animals and the Danners as you get a look at the numbers for Drew Gillespie. We've got some loyal Dalton Molden fans out there, but I'll tell you what, I like the, the cutoff jersey on that party animals fan. He just looked right in that uniform. The tattoos really do a big deal of, of help in that scenario. Part of you ever look at the team picture for the One City World Tour party animals? <laughs> those boys, those boys look like the party animals. That was <laughs> a rowdy, rowdy looking bunch uh, headed to Mobile, Alabama. Alex Ziggy Ziegler gets the pinch hit opportunity here. A resident bat trickster struck out looking last night. He's two for five on the tour, chops this one foul. His two hits, both doubles. So obviously, in a sample size that does not qualify for tour-wide stats. His OPS plus coming into the at-bat was a season high 219. That will drop down. And I wouldn't doubt that Eric Jones Jr. or DR Meadows were in second at third at 169 and 168 respectively will take back over. How about this? Noah Bridges, second plate appearance of the season. It's a tricky one with Drew Gillespie, the man out of Albuquerque, New Mexico is a very funky right-hander and now with an 0-1 lead in the count for Drew. He's gonna smack away his glove. Baber, Acuff, and Hampton do the same behind him. It's always really an emphatic dance from Gillespie who throws the ball out of the stadium. <laughs> what? He threw the ball out of the stadium, Josh. Biko, you warned me. You warned me about this. The 6-2-2 from Drew Gillespie. When I saw him yeet that ball in the air, I thought he was trying to hit the broadcast window. And I know there is netting right here that I am just now realizing. 
That scared the bejesus out of me. Shook you to your core. Oh, hot shot off the bat of Noah Bridges. What a play by Bryson Bloomer just in time to get one of the fastest men you'll ever see run from home to first. That was a tough play. Bloomer made it look easy. Another look here. You're still recovering, John. Yeah, but that was a great play by Bryson Bloomer getting in front of that ball and making a great throw over to first base to Jason Swan to get that second out. Noah Bridges, in his two at-bats this season, has hit into two very tough outs. Jason Swan snared a liner down the first base line to rob Bridges of extra bases. Now Bryson Bloomer robbed him of a hit here tonight. Now Eric Jones Jr. who came in in Michael Deeb's spot in the order, which was the extra hitter spot, but took over as the first baseman for Brandon Crosby defensively. Gets his first plate appearance of the evening. Boy, oh boy, is EJ special. Former Mariners and Twins minor leaguer. Mariners bullpen catcher after that for the 2022 season. He's been one of the best hitters in banana ball in all three tours he's been a part of for reasons just like that. Nice front door bender from Gillespie, lined into left for a single. And I'm just wildly impressed this season at the way that Eric Jones Jr. has batted against breaking balls. The way that he's been able to sit back against Sean Blue curveballs, and what we saw there, that Drew Gillespie slider, and just be able to drive them for base hits and even home runs as well. As That's how we saw EJ collect the home run off of Fluke in Houston. Now Reese Alexiades has EJ take it off. Belly flopping into second. Has the base stolen. He's doing it all, making the most of his half a game of action here. And our final of three games at Baton Rouge. 2-1 count on Alexiades who has struck out and flown out to the right field warning track. Just misses down and in, count three and one. Alexiades had 29 home runs last year for the Ogden Raptors in the Pioneer League. A homer here would tie the seventh inning. That one, low outside corner. Painted by Gillespie. This second K of the inning, that one at 90 miles an hour according to Trackman. We'll get him out of the frame and give the party animals their first point of the ball game. Excellent pitch by Drew Gillespie. A little too close, I feel like, for Reese and Lexiatis to take, but the party animals just happy to get their first point in this ball game. We will salute all the service members, past and present, here in Baton Rouge tonight as we get another couple looks at the strikeout and beautiful dance from Drew Gillespie to celebrate the K. We pass. That on to everybody at home. Thank you for your service. And we get to welcome in our fearless leader, Mr. Jesse Cole, the man in the yellow tux. Jesse, how special has it been for you to go from Banana Ball's MLB Stadium debut a week ago to the college campus debut here at LSU? I'll tell you, this last week, it's been a dream come true to see what happened in Houston, 41,000. But then to come here, the last three nights, you know, over 30,000 fans, our first collegiate stadium, which is a big test for Banana Ball to see the energy. And I got to say right now, this is the loudest crowd we've ever seen. And it's, you know, it's really special. The guys are responding. Every guy said they've loved it here in Louisiana. And it's, you know, again, almost 200,000 people got on the lottery list for these games, which shows you the demand and the excitement here in LSU. So, Jesse, what made Alec Box Stadium the perfect first venue for Banana Ball on a college campus? Well, we wanted to look at what is the biggest stadiums in college baseball, what has the best environments, the best atmosphere, and obviously with a storied history here at LSU, it was a no-brainer. And the support, you know, back at the Austin said, we want to bring the Bananas to LSU. We're like, let's do this. And I think there's going to be a great history of some of the greatest collegiate stadiums in the future for, for our teams in Banana Ball. Jesse, all of us here in BTV have to wish you a happy belated birthday. I'm sure getting to to share a plate with all of us on Wednesday made it a special one. <laughs> yes, I reached the big 4-0, so, you know, we'll see. I, the 30s have been pretty wonderful for Emily, myself, and the Banana Ball family, but I think the 40s are going to be even more special, so can't wait to see what's ahead. Jesse, we haven't gotten to do it in a while. Bananas lead 3-1 to one after seven innings. What's your prediction for the ball game? I think it's going to come down to the last inning, Biko. I'm telling you tonight, it is coming down to the last inning. 
You know how it rolls in banana ball. I think you're Nostradamus. Jesse Cole, thank you so much. I uh, love you, Bigo. Love you, Josh. Thank you, Jesse. Love you too, man. That is, it's awesome always getting to catch up with the man with the plan, the reason why we're all here in Louisiana, the reason why I'm in the boot for the first time in my life. DJ the Invader has landed on the middle of this diamond, and it hasn't been the start to the tour that he's been dreaming of, but boy, oh boy, <laughs> Is that took his son, Tanner Thomas, one that I've been dreaming of? That is a badonka donk right there in Baton Rouge. Huh? Oh, God. Tanner Tinder Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, easy, Vince. No surgery involved in that behind. Oh, natural, folks. Everybody, I'd like everybody to take a moment to look up the song that was played for this one as well. You'll, you'll see that on Party Animal social media. I'm sure it'll be out. On the tick and the talk or the Instagram or both if it's that juiceful in the near future. It's one of the most bizarre and interesting songs I've ever heard in my life. I believe it was a Zach Bro discovery, one of our Louisiana natives as we get the zoom in we've all been waiting for there. As this one served foul and oh my gosh, almost a stupendous catch by that fan. Another life for Mr. Tinder Thomas. You know, normally you don't want fans reaching over the wall trying to make the snags in Banana Ball. It's kind of the exact opposite in this one. Just ricocheting off that fan's glove would have been one of the best foul balls we've ever seen caught by a fan. Instead of 2-2 count now on the Animals left fielder. This one hit a mile high down the right field line. At the track, at the wall, Tanner Thomas has left Alec Box Stadium. A towering blast with that bodacious booty. And the animals strike first here in the eighth. Tanner Thomas making sure to get that rump on every base before coming around to score at home. And would we see a spank train from the animals? No, but they all fall down. <laughs> it is. A shockwave erupting from Tanner landing on the dish. Here's Drake Toll. It's always important to turn our microphones on when we want to conduct an interview. Next time, Tanner Thomas. It's a moonshot home run with his enormous keister. We'll have the mic on to chat with him. Chase Acuff plucked, and he'll take first base as he hands the baton off to Tosh Porter. Never a better time than now to introduce our buzzword tonight. We got a jam-packed evening of banana ball, so no time to do it in between innings. We're gonna throw a link in the comment section and the description of this broadcast on YouTube as Taj has a base knock up the middle. Acuff scampering to second gets there just barely ahead of the throw from Meadows. So all three party animals aboard to kick off this top of the seventh. Our buzzword tonight. It is college. Our buzzword tonight is college, as you see it at the bottom of your screen. And Dustin Baber, Irish jigging his way up towards the plate, is now pounding his third pint of green beer tonight. This man is unhinged. Nico Baber probably asked them to just carry him to the plate, too. Helton and Bloomer, a couple guys to recruit for that job. Baber, a little wobble, wobbly now that he is at the box. Having a good night, one for two. So far, the consistent chugging of green beer has not impaired his hitting skills. Front door slider, skies it in the infield. Jones and Leroy converging. EJ will make the call in the catch. Infield fly was called anyhow. And the first out here in the top of the seventh. On 
the outside corner. Painted by the invader, Jason Swan. Nope. So sure he agreed with the call by Vincent Chapman. And there's a beautiful front door bender, making a quick 0-2 count. Yeah, great location here from DJ the Invader against Jason Swan, who chops this up the middle. Cox with the behind the back glove feed to Jackson Olsen, who throws it over to Eric Jones Jr. What a phenomenal double play here to end the top of the seventh. Third trick play for the glove magician. An absolute doozy of a twin killing. You get to look at it here, unbelievable. Jackson Olsen, great turn at the bag. And the damage is just one run in the top of the seventh for the party animals. This Bananas double play duo tonight have been on another level. We have seen it time and time again with the trick plays and overall with just some phenomenal defensive gems. Seven combined trick plays between Olsen and Cox. Let's get it down to the young professor for a blindfolded pillow fight. They are fighting me, Rich Lee. We've got five. Four, three, two, one. Stop the fight. Stop the fight. Oh, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, how did we feel about contestant number one? Contestant number two. Contestant number three. What about contestant number four? Ladies and gentlemen, your winner in the yellow. Give it up for Charlie. Number 15, Rack, Robert Anthony Cruz. Drew Gillespie out for another inning of work. We will have six, seven, and eight, Robert Anthony Cruz, Bill Leroy, and Brandon Showtime Crosby. And Drew Gillespie with an opportunity to score the party animals yet another point in this ball game. And you know, he was talking about how coming in in game one in the ninth inning and pitching really well and, of course, getting the showdown shut down as well. He did a lot for his confidence out there on the mound, and he's trying to keep that confidence rolling here tonight. Gillespie, a really tough guy to face. Five pitches in the low 90s with the fastball. You see it right there, that one at 90 on the dot, according to Trackman, fouled away. There's four seam, two seam, and cut fastballs, as well as a changeup and a curveball. And he'll throw straight over the top, three quarters, sidearm, or he'll drop all the way down for some submarine. Robert Anthony Cruz, ready for whatever Drew has for him. Rack is three for three. Also singles and a double. He's having himself a heck of a night offensively. And hitting the ball to all fields. We saw an opposite field hit in the second for Rack. Then he goes down the right field line in the fourth inning. And here, this one placed in right center. It's it's very encouraging. Again, talking about just how he start, he felt he had really figured things out at the plate after game one here in Baton Rouge. He scored the inning tying run in the second. He represents the inning tying run here in the seventh. As Bill Leroy, who is grounded out to Acuff at short twice, steps in. Bounces it to Acuff a third time. Bounce to second for one, Faber to first. Another beautiful double play. This time orchestrated by the party animals. Two trick play double plays in the seventh and this one possibly even more important for the party animals as they're trying to claim their second point. Acuff with a perfect bounce pass feed to Dustin Faber who also nailed being able to pivot and get that ball over to Jason Swan. Now Brandon Crosby represents the inning tying run. Gillespie pours in another 90 mile an hour heater for a strike. Bouncer grabbed by Baber, 360 between the legs. Another trick play, and that one secures the second point of the night for the party animals there within one. An air Baber trick play to end the seventh, and the Drew Gillespie gets out of the inning in one minute and 42 seconds for the party animals. Let's get it down to the young professor, see if this fan can outdash the flash. We'll even give you a head start. You'll get all the way to first base, and then we'll see if the flash can beat you back here to home plate all the way around. Gentlemen, are you ready? Then on your way to first base, Brady, get ready. On your mark, get set, go. Oh, he's got wheels, man. He's got explosive power. There goes Brady, and here comes the flash. 
with that kilt flapping in the wind. But Brady is quick. This is going to be close. It's coming down to the wire. Oh, my God. By a hair. It's Malachi, but give it up one time for the deceptively fast Brady. Boy, that was an absolute barn burner. Tremendous effort shown by our fan and Malachi Mitchell alike. As we go to the top of the eighth inning, we see Austin Krasminski taking over on the mound for the Nanners. Yeah, Austin Krasminski in his last outing had his best one yet. One inning pitch, he induced a foul out to a fan, his first ever in his banana ball career. Threw only eight pitches in Jacksonville, Florida, and got out of the inning in two minutes and 13 seconds. He's been a little shaky with control early on in the year, but if he pitches like he did in Jacksonville, he should be able to help the bananas maintain their lead in this ball game. Krasminski, a 2017 collegiate banana. Five years of minor league baseball experience after he left Gulf Coast State College for the Los Angeles Angels organization, finished up in the Cubs farm system. Nasty stuff for Chris Monster. Fastball is about 93 to 94 miles an hour on average. A man out of Roswell, Georgia. He's got the top of the party animals order in Reese Hampton as that one float low below the zone. Check swing, pitcher's pitch, count even at one and one. Make it one and two. Hampton tonight, one for three, led off the ball game with the double on the first pitch he saw of the night. Since then, he's grounded out to second twice, did reach on a fielder's choice and scored in the sixth. Hampton, four years of minor league baseball experience. Nine between the pitcher and hitter here. He turns on this one. High and deep to right, but it will die just in front of the warning track. With the way Reese Hampton flipped the bat after connecting with that pitch from Austin Krasminski. It looks like that was going to leave Alec Fox Stadium for Reese's second home run of this series, but Brandon Crosby able to come down with the catch. It's a big first out for Krem, who has struggled a little bit against Reese Hampton. He was previously batting 500 against the righty. It was a 94 mile an hour fastball. Left Hampton's bat at 92, according to Trackman. His problem, it had a 43 degree launch angle thing could have been long gone with a little less launch. Very impressive nonetheless that Reese Hampton able to make such good contact with that pitch after Krem had tried to go with a little bit of a Nestor Cortez mess with the timing, stutter move before delivering the pitch to home plate. Nice circle change up there from Chris Minsky. Part of his three pitch mix. Got the low to mid 90s heater and then a slider when it's on. It's one of the nastiest pitches in banana ball. Jake Skoll, seven years of minor league baseball. And he watches the 94 mile an hour heater miss just a pinch high. And you can hear the collective groan from the crowd here in Baton Rouge, wanting Vincent Chapman to call that pitch on Jake Skoll and get them some donuts. Fouled at the dish. Krasminski went to the circle change. That one came in at 89, and we'll do another 2-2. Heater gets the outside corner. Actually, check that. Circle changeup. Skull furious. Hits the ball out of Bill Leroy's hands. Then golfs the ball into Vincent Chapman. He feels like he was seriously robbed of a plate appearance there. Yeah, kind of a borderline call there. And Vincent Chapman, if anything, wanting to make sure this crowd goes home happy with some donuts as Ethan Scooge, Zach Phillips and company filing into the stands with a bunch of munchkins. Now 
Hawks are fouled from Bryson Bloomer. for two on the night thus far. Plunked his last time. And he comes up empty on that devastating slider from Chris Monster. And here's the difference for Krem. We've talked about him struggling with control. He's gotten ahead of all three party animals batters that he's faced. He's not overthrowing. Just an easy breezy beautiful 94 mile an hour heater on every fastball he's fired. As the slider is fouled away there and not caught by a fan. And I just can't believe that Brzezminski is trying all of these techniques to mess with timing and still pounding the zone. Reese Hampton put the pitch from Brem in play. Grayson Bloomer had to foul that one off. It was in the zone. That's an excellent take. Watch as the slider dip below the knees. Krem laughing with Bloomer, acknowledging that he did a heck of a job of holding off of that one. Now the 2-2. Same pitch, same result. What an eye from the Boomer. He's worked the count full. And this is a heck of a battle. Both guys acknowledging these are two banana ballers at the top of their game. Payoff pitch. That one misses down and in. Chris went with the 3-2 circle changeup. Bloomer on the third straight pitch shows off his excellent eye. And he will be pinch run for by Jordan Hussein, the designated runner for the Animals. Last season, Bryson Bloomer only drew a ball for sprint in 6% of his total plate appearances. But so far on this year's tour, we've seen a much more patient approach from Bloomer, who draws his fourth sprint already this season. And that's compared to just three strikeouts. That's the Tyler Gillum special. That's why he had him on two straight Bananas teams. Big reason why the Nanners won two straight Pettit Cups. One count on Garrett Delano now. Animals DH shanks it foul. Behind one and two. He has struck out, grounded out, and popped out tonight. There goes Jordan Hussein. Pitch is called strike three. Took a little off it. Trackman had the fastball at 92. Hits the low outside corner. And Krasminski holds serve. What an outing. Boys fired up for Krem. And the Bananas dugout, look at it. Again, definitely had the knees. Was just a question of if it had the plate. And Vincent Chapman said, yes, sir. Right on the black. Two Ks in the frame for Krem, both of them looking. And now everyone at Skipford Midfield here at Alec Box Stadium, lighting up the sky with their phones. It has been a special debut for Banana Ball here at LSU. First three banana ball games ever played at a college campus. First three games ever in the wonderful state of Louisiana, right here in the capital. And we have a plethora of wonderful stops in the future. The five before this were tremendous as well. But I would wager when all is said and done on the 2024 tour, a whole lot of us here at Fans First Entertainment will be saying this was one of our favorites. I mean, we love the energy that we've seen from this crowd. We love the hospitality that we've been shown. And hopefully this is one of these returning destinations for Banana Ball in the future. Jesse Cole, how have you been feeling about it, man? We love you so much, Banana Nation. Now let's go, Bananas! Bam. As I suspected, the boys are back. Were they ever gone? I don't, I don't think so. I may have been. But we have returned in full force, as has Ryan Rodriguez to the mound. One of the most entertaining pitchers in banana ball has been nothing but a thrill to watch in his rookie season. I mean, you just see the intensity in his eyes as he's warming up right there. I mean, 
He's got quite the poker face out there, I think. I mean, you don't know whether he's happy. You don't know whether he's feeling intense. I mean, all I know is Ryan Rodriguez is a different animal once he takes the mound, and he's pounding the glove, getting ready to throw here to Jackson Olsen. Well, more memorable moments from this tour came back in Tampa, Florida in our first season in early February. Rodriguez got a screaming line drive from Jackson Olsen in game three. Right back to him, he snared it and went full psycho mode, screaming at the grade eight, ripping a split, and then giving a legendary interview to Drake Toll outside the party animals. Allen hour heater, according to Trackman, fouled away by Jackson. A lot of wild thing in Ryan Rodriguez's game. I mean, this guy is locked in and tapped in. And he'll get a trick play from Chase Acuff to start his inning out well. Acuff doesn't try anything too crazy here. Wants to make sure that he can get the first out of this inning for Ryan Rodriguez without putting a man on base. And goes in between the legs. Now 14 total trick plays between the Bananas and Party Animals tonight. A really great number. Acuff with his second there, 23rd on the tour. What a piece by Ryan Cox, but just barely in on the hands. And attempting the trick play in right, but coming up empty is Jake Skoll. Cox will get two bases on the trick play miss. Yeah, rare trick play miss from Jake Skoll. We've seen a lot of him going down to his knees and then giving up his mobility, catching the ball and then segueing it into a worm. Here Skoll tries to go behind the back, can't come up with it, but that's... You know, it, it's okay for the party animals. A lot of the times they are fine. If, if you get the first out, then you can try for the trick plays. He made his first five on the tour, has missed his last two. Now Dalton Malden with the pinch hit opportunity and swings and misses at that gnarly slider from Ryan Rodriguez. Also will give you a 12-6 curveball. And the heater in the low 90s, jams Malden there. Swan will try to bare hand, it comes up empty. That's back-to-back -back trick plays for the animals. The inning could be over now. It would have been a fantastic MPI from Ryan Rodriguez, but now he's got to face the two-hole hitter, Gabe Howell, with the inning-winning run in scoring position. I mean, you commend the party animals for wanting to try the trick plays here, but with it just a one-point game, you would like to keep it that way before heading into the final inning. Howell fouls it off. Excellent job from Rodriguez. And jumping ahead, continues to pound the zone with 90 mile an hour fastballs. Live arm out of Newhall, California, in the Santa Clarita area. With the 0 2. There's that beautiful slider, just barely misses down and out. Taj Porter tried to frame it. Great take by Howell. I mean, he had his back completely turned to Gabe Howell there then fired off a mean breaking ball that again just missed to Howell. Here he gets the swing and the miss. He is pounding that club, fired up. I'm telling you, you can feel the energy out of Ryan Rodriguez all the way up here in the booth. Sexy Mexi is a sight to behold. This guy is what Banana Ball is all about and he's got Josh Tulevsky. Oh, I'm feeling crazy. Juiced up next to me, what a play. Jason Swan flips it to second in time. Acuff beats Molden to the bag just by a hair. And Ryan Rodriguez holds serve. Here's the young professor. It's time to cast our gaze upon the scoreboard. Heading into the top of the ninth inning, the score sits at three points for the Savannah Bananas and two points for the party animals. But here's the thing about the game of Banana Ball. In the final inning, every run counts for a point. That means the party animals are very far from out of it and anything can happen. On the other side, the Savannah Bananas just need three outs to lock down a victory and win the state of Louisiana. Ladies and gentlemen, get loud here at Alex Box Stadium and welcome to the final inning. Of course, the great state of Louisiana would all come down to this. A full capacity crowd 
gets to see the best pitcher in banana ball history. Danny Hosley on the bump. Again, five, six, and seven. Noah Fisher, Tanner Thomas, and Chase Aka, who have been three of the best hitters for the party animals on this tour. And still with absolutely stellar numbers on this world tour, striking up 23% of the total batters he's faced. And a 178 ERA plus means Danny Hosley has been 78% better than the tour average pitcher. Five for six in save opportunities and looking for save number six. We're proud to welcome in Danny Hosley to the broadcast. Boys, good to be back, man. It is great to have you, man. Five, six, and seven for the animals. How do you plan on attacking Noah Fisher? Part of the order here, man, I got him out via, I think, the changeup and curveball last time, but don't want to give away my game plan here. I'm going to have to cover my mouth. I hope you boys can still hear me. Fair enough. You don't want a Greg Maddox, Will Clark situation. No, we don't need that right here. But, uh, you know, attack, attack. Fisher, the Horizon League Player of the Year last spring. There it is. I did not know that about Fisher. Pretty good accolade right there. I was yeah, he hit the tar off the ball. Jesus. Oh, he hit the tar off of that one right there. <laughs> yes, he did. Good job, though, by D.R. Meadows to keep nice him at first base. Oh, please be there. Oh, nice play. Nice play. Just a terrific play from D.R. Meadows, utilizing his speed to cut off that ball in the gap and hold Noah Fisher to just one base. Got to be real thankful to have a guy like that in center, huh, Danny? The guy's flying around out there. He's already made a heck of a dive of play. This guy's just, he is the best of the best. I'll say that. Now Tanner Thomas, who had a towering home run his last time with the big button. There we go, get ahead with that. That breaking ball has been a big pitch for me. If I can start throwing that thing for a strike, I might, uh, might be able to do something here. There we go. Peter right at 90, now you're ahead 0-2. Does anyone know what he hit out on the home run? I'm just trying to avoid throwing that pitch right here. That's a great question. I think yep. I'm going change up here. I gotta go with my best. That sounds like the right move. Oh, cut change right there. Oh, broken that. I mean, that's just unfair. Ooh. How about Tanner Thomas smashing the bat over his knee? That thing cut right there. You see Bill? <laughs> I don't know how Bill caught that thing, to be honest with you. <laughs> not the normal movement for your Vulcan changeup. No, it's not right there. All right, A cuff, man. You know what's funny? I've been talking to him. He's been giving me his approach, so I'm going to try to live down because he's looking for the ball up here. I just hope it's not reverse psychology. You know, you really hope not. Maybe he's just trying to get in my head. Let's see if I can get in. Oh, jeez. Here we go, back in the zone. Big fastball 2 I'll hit it here. Remind Fisher that you know he's there. I don't catch him. I don't want to see him catch me sleeping here. Oh, Vince, oh. come on, Vince. Oh. That's right there. You know that's right there. It looked like the top of the zone to me. That's what I thought. Ugh. That's 2-2. Two, two. Come on, that's all right. We come back. We battle. We shake it off. 3-1 here. One of our best pitches. Yep. Got to keep him on over there. Oh. Fisher doesn't run a ton, but successful in both his stolen base attempts on the tour. That is good to know. Here we go. Atta boy, Danny. We gotta feel the position, you know? You just took care of the best party and most hitter on the tour thus far. We like that. We like to hear that. I wasn't gonna tell you while the at bat was going. Oh, I appreciate that. Forgive me for the announcer drinks. I think we had in the last time. Naturally, now you have to take care of the home state kid. You know, didn't this happen in Jacksonville with Swanee, I thought? It did. Well, Taj hit a changeup off me last time, so we're going to avoid that. There we go. Way to blow it past him. A little heat right there. Right back to it. Same pitch, same result. What are you boys thinking? Same thing? 
Don't fix what ain't broke. This is for it, baby. This is for it. Go on, baby! Come on! Give it to me! Danny oh, Hosley oh, heck of a job! Oh, 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 Danny Hosley, thank you so much. Thank you, always. Always a pleasure, Biko. Josh, always a pleasure. That's what's up, Get up there, up there. Okay. There I'm goes right. Danny Hosley. Textbook save from one of the best pitchers you'll ever see operate on the mound in your life. Two strikeouts in the ninth inning for Danny Hosley. Both of them accomplished in just three pitches against Tanner Thomas and Taj Porter. Two excellent bats on this tour. And... Hey, it got the game finished in two hours on the dot. How about that? Here's Bill Leroy. The Nanners win the great state of Louisiana. They've won two in a row. They're 10 and six. And have not lost a series since the opener in Tampa, Florida. Really impressive stuff from this Nanners team who had lost 12 straight games to the party animals when all was said and done in George M. Steinbrenner Field. They are 10 and three since then. Take it over, Bill. Time to meet the winning squad. Your entertainers, Alex Ziegler, Malachi Mitchell, with infielder Dalton Malden, and Maceo. Coming down next, our starting pitcher, Noah Nisnik, and myself, Phil LaRoy. And now for our pitching staff, Ethan Scooge, Kyle Louise, Ryan Kellogg, Jared Donaldson, Christian Deerman, DJ the Invader, Austin Kruzminski, Andy Archer, and Noah and Zach Phillips. And now for our, now for our utility guys, Mr. Eric Jones and Danny Hosley. And now for the boys in the infield, Mr. Ryan Cox, Jackson Olson, Gabe Howell, Brandon Crosby, Daniel Oberst, and Rick. For the boys in the outfield, we have DR Meadows, Noah Bridges, Michael Deeb, and Reese Alexianis. And our wonderful coaching staff, Coach Adam Byron, Ray Ortega, and Tyler Gilla. Last but not least, the tallest man in sports, Dakota Stilts All Britain. Cole says goodbye. We say hello up in the broadcast booth. Welcome inside. Along, along with, alongside, I just didn't want to do back-to-back -back sides. I digress. Alongside Josh Tolevsky, 
I'm Biko Scala. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday night with us here in Banana Land. What a series win for the Bananas. What a banana ball game. Look, they are 3-0 and in rubber games this season, so when they need to win series, they are clearly doing it. And, of course, Lee saw 14 trick plays between the Bananas and Party Animals tonight, and I am just floored at the trick plays and the overall defense from Ryan Cox and Jackson Olsen of the Bananas and the Party Animals double play duo as well, Chase Acuff and Dustin Baber. We saw both both of these guys trying trick plays all the time and doing it in, in important situations. Both combos able to turn trick play double plays tonight. But I think when we zero in on this overall series here in Baton Rouge, it's the Bananas bullpen more than anything else that won them this series. And it started in game one. Andy Archer throws three shutout innings of relief. He's phenomenal now. There was a little bit of a hiccup for Zach Phillips, but unfortunate luck for the party animals, just getting some really lucky base hits and just kind of ricocheting off of gloves. Right. And, of course, Danny Hosley came away with the blown save. But since then, you have Kyle Lewigs come in last night and throw four no-hit innings for the Bananas Not and earn three points to get them the win as right, well. Right. The offense backs Kyle, and then tonight, Krasminski's phenomenal. Three great innings from Jared Donaldson. Such a huge back bounce back work in relief for Donnie after struggling the previous relief outing. And, of course, Krasminski really starting to pound the zone for the Bananas. And Hosley, after surrendering the blown save his first of the season, you could kind of feel it when he got that final out with how fired up he was. He wanted a little revenge against these party animals, and it showed out there on the mound as the Bananas win the series and continue their winning ways in kilts as well. Still undefeated in banana ball in the kilts. That is a very good point. And, and when you talk about Jared Donaldson's relief appearance tonight, you mentioned it, three amazing innings, did not allow a hit. The only base runner to reach was on a sprint across his first three innings. Then he does get touched up a bit. Three hits, two runs come across in his fourth inning of relief. But you still look at his overall resume and just the two runs across four innings. I mean, he was dynamite tonight. It looked like the Jared Donaldson that was a Division II All American was the second best pitcher in all of Division II back in 2022. When he's pounding the zone and when that splitter is on, you know you're going to get a good outing out of Jared Donaldson, and he was doing both of those things tonight. I think the only thing that did him in in his final inning was just that the party animals were getting their second time around looking at him Correct. and, again, had been communicating each other with each other about the plan of attack against him. That's exactly what it was. He faced the entire party animals lineup through the first three frames and then started it with Dustin Baber, who was ready to rumble single, single, and then the big two run triple from Drake from Jake Skull that drove in the only two runs off of Donaldson on the night and then we talk about Austin Krasminski I mean the resume is absolutely absurd when you look at the arsenal his metrics when you have a consistently 94 mile an hour fastball and devastating circle changeup and slider to boot if that guy turns into another Danny Hosley things are really not looking great for the party animals well there are two things to note about Austin Krasminski the first thing he told me when I met him in spring training was that he prided himself on throwing strikes and clearly was getting ahead of the batters tonight. So backing up what he was telling me and you. And then Adam Byron and Tyler Gillum told me that he could be a dark horse for one of the guys to lead the tour at the end of the season in MPI. So we could continue to see him work faster and faster and, again, brought something really unique out to the mound as well with some of the deliveries to home plate, doing some stutter steps and whatnot to throw off the timing of the party animals clearly helped him out on the mound. Yeah, this is a guy who would still be an affiliated ball if luck had been on his side, which is the story for a plethora of our former minor leaguers on the party animals and bananas alike. But boy, oh boy, the stuff is absolutely legit. There's a reason why he made it up to AAA in the Los Angeles Angels organization. He is really impressive. Okay, we have to give away a pair of shoes tonight, courtesy of our friends of Zappos before we shut down this series and see you in Gwinnett, Georgia, this coming weekend. Josh Drum roll, please. The boots. Tigers. Very good. Diana Petragolo. Diana Petragolo, if I pronounced your name right, son of a gun, I deserve an award. Congratulations on your pair of shoes, courtesy of Zappos. How do you feel about that, Josh? 
could Pietra, be. Pietra Gallo is the only other way that it, it could possibly be. Which is in completely my different from, yes. from my pronunciation. So there we go. Well, you got a 50-50 shot. Let's shout out the cast and crew that made this entire thing possible. It starts with the Iron Horse of BTV, Emerson Elmgren, on the first base camera. Across the diamond, you know it. It is Lex Fowler dominating over there as well. On the high home for the third straight game, Tate Eisworth, absolute superstar. Another Tiger who has been fantastic on the low home, Nick Lopez. And the same can be said for Louis DeVita out on the center field camera. Thank you so much to all you guys. That is unbelievable stuff from you. On the high first, Kylie Sadamka. You know her. You love her. She is absolutely onions wherever you put her. Same goes for Clayton Franklin, a veteran of BTV, as well as our utility, Nick Keldy. Clayton Franklin on the wireless. Nick Keldy making all kinds of guys up. We could not do this thing without them. When it comes to the folks an hour in the future in Savannah, Georgia, in Grayson Stadium, Griffin Ellis directing everybody in the control room. Our technical director, Pressing all the right buttons. Arch Pingle. Excellent work, Griffin and Arch. On the replay, one name, you know him, and you love him. It is Kwanzi. That guy kills it. On the audio, Dakota Burns said, great work on the ones and the twos. The score bug, dominated by Michael Basista. What is new? Are the graphics absolutely murked by Julia Massey? And the statistics being updated on said graphics. Kicked out of the entire stadium, kicked out of the stadium. That's how incredible Mikey O'Connor was. He booted it over 300 in feet out of historic Grayson Stadium. That's good stuff. When it comes to the moderators in the chat, it is Colbyte and Scott Thompson. That would be Colbyte underscore. underscore. Do not forget the underscore, Biko, you absolute dingus. When it comes to our K-Club queen, it is Melissa Beal, Melissa Beans, Supreme, our YouTube king, Zach Bro, our reg resident Cajun man, and our video legend, Chris Sachi. It takes an absolute army to put these broadcasts together. Thank you to everybody who makes it happen. That goes to our Party Animals correspondent, Drake Toll, who is on his stuff tonight, unless the microphone was not on, but that's okay. Everything else, when the mic was on, Mm, chef's kiss, Drake. Thank you so much for to uh, Sean Fluke, Noah Nisnik, Dustin Baber, Brian Cox. That's it. And Danny Hosley. Thank you for taking that home for me, Josh. I needed it. Five guys mic'd up for the price of one broadcast. Five guys mic'd up. Yes. <laughs> very, very good. Way to send that one home, buddy. Uh, Chad Reese is the coordinating producer of BTV. He is literally the straw that stirs this delicious drink. Josh Talevsky, the color coordinating and the bananalytical, statistical savanting. Superb, as per usual. You're on fire tonight. Biko Scala, this was a blast this weekend. Great job by you. I think it's time we go figure out if Jackson's got any more pasta laya. Very good point. Luckily, I've got some pasta laya that I'm stashing right behind this curtain here. Thank you so much to the executive producers of BTV, Jared Orton, Emily, Jesse, and Carrie Cole. I am Biko Scala. For our entire cast and crew saying so long for now, we will see you next weekend in Gwinnett, Georgia. Three games? Three, Three games! You betcha in the triple-A home of the Atlanta Braves. It's going to be a blast. Can't wait to see you back on the East Coast in Eastern Standard Time. First pitch will be 7 p.m. Carry the one Thursday. We have a little Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday. Home, baby! I think it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, that sounds right to me. My watch isn't telling me anything, but you can check out the schedule, and that will confirm it. I believe Josh. First game, March 22nd. Out of boy, there it is. March 22nd, we'll see you. 7 p.m. first pitch on the East Coast. Until then, we'll, we'll see you